Playoff implications on the line and a big late December matchup in Jacksonville where the Jaguars host the Cowboys. A win today and the Cowboys clinch a playoff spot on a gorgeous Sunday afternoon and welcome. He's Greg Olson. I'm Kevin Burkhart. What we didn't expect here is that the Jaguars are still in the playoff mix and it's because of their young quarterback Trevor Lawrence. Absolutely. These last five weeks for Trevor Lawrence, while the team's been a little ups and downs, alternating wins and losses, his play has by far been the best of his young career and last week, most recently, to go on the road division game against Tennessee get a huge win that's why they're still alive here in December and what a way to start the day on Fox an incredible World Cup final with Argentina coming out in PKs and now the Cowboys and Jags on a perfect Sunday here in Florida 56 degrees crisp and sunny Cowboys won the toss they've elected to receive here to start this ball game glad to have you aboard on a great Sunday afternoon and here we go and the Cowboys will have Tyron Smith back in a new position at right tackle today, Aaron Andrews. Yeah, Kevin, this was all Tyron's idea. Dak Prescott telling me last week when they lost right tackle Taron Steele, Tyron started telling people on the offense, when I come back, I'm going to fill in and I'm going to play right tackle. This is the first time he's going to be doing it since his rookie year in 2011. Dak Prescott saying tells you a lot about the person and player that he is. And oh, by the way, he's excited to be on that right side with Zach Martin. Pretty incredible. I mean, guys, when the franchise left tackle says, yeah, you know what, I'll play on the right side, and we'll see how he does here today. Cowboys from their own 25 will start off with a run to Elliott, who chugs his way forward and moves the pile, actually, for five. Looks like there was nothing there. And Dak Prescott, who's coming off, boy, a game that looked ugly for a long time, but when it mattered most, he led Dallas on a 98-yard game-winning drive. Absolutely. I think that last drive, they, they started fast, and then, of course, the way they finished last week with that come-from-behind win down in Houston, that, that was Dak at his best. They need more of those moments cut down on some of the mistakes that they've seen pop up over these last couple weeks. Prescott to throw it for the first time. Gets it out to Elliott in the flat, who easily coasts for a first down. So this offensive line, as Aaron told us about, going to be different. Tyron Smith will not play every snap, though, today because it's his first game. He had a pretty vicious avulsion fracture of his left knee, so they'll keep tabs on him. But it says a lot that they move him to right, that they keep Tyler Smith, the rookie, on the left side, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think it's really smart by Mike McCarthy to understand you lose Terrence Steele. Instead of moving around multiple guys to fill in your two tackle spots, keep Tyler Smith, the rookie, where he's been all year, and let the veteran make the move. Prescott, pressure coming. Senses steps away, and he's hit and dropped for a loss. And the Jags have their first sack. Arden Key got there, so did Fadakasi. At four sacks last week, they get their first one today. Yeah, you're going to see Arden Keys off the left side. He's just working. We were just talking about Tyler Smith, the, the rookie left tackle, gets beat. Dak tries to slide up in the pocket. Great pursuit there by 49 Arden Key. Able to wrestle down Dak for the sack. Elliott. Waiting and then rushing up the gut gets positive yardage out to the 38 yard line this Jaguars defense They're young. They're inexperienced. They make some mistakes, but they've been playing better because they've been getting a lot of turnovers of late Yeah, and that was the key last week We mentioned in the open that big win down in Tennessee a team They haven't really been able to beat for a while now the turnovers and the ability to stop Derrick Henry the final three quarters that run defense is gonna play big We all know how Dallas feels about their run game they're going to have to play that well again today. Third down and eight. Prescott looking, going deep. It is caught for a first down. C.D. Lamb has it. Into Jags territory, and he's got 19. This is actually really nice coverage by Trey Herndon. C.D. Lamb just sees the ball. It's a little underthrown, and he just makes a great play coming back underneath. You'll see he kind of senses that ball's underthrown. He has to come back through the defender. And Dak Prescott had great protection, gave CeeDee Lamb a chance, and did a great job tracking it down. Two backs here for Dallas. Tony Pollard lines up as a receiver, and now he's going to go in motion. On a first down, Elliott running left side, and Elliott's not going to get very far. Devon Hamilton in there on that stop. And so Doug Peterson, a familiar face in a new place, of course, led the Eagles to the Super Bowl back in 2017, took last year off of coaching, and now here in Jacksonville, we're really 
it just feels like a perfect spot for him and especially for Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, and he had three real big jobs, right? The number one job he had coming in here this year in Jacksonville was reset the culture, right? Reset the culture, of course, much to be made last week, last year about what went down here. Here's a little flip coming near side. Lamb has it and diving forward, getting out to the 39, maybe a yard and a half or so. You know, then after that culture, which clearly from talking to everybody this week as we prepared for the game, there's a there's a new life that's in the building. Secondly, they need to develop Trevor Lawrence. We'll talk about them in a little bit when Jacksonville gets the ball. He's playing the best football of his career. And then, of course, just improve the entire team, compete better, acquire better talent. So far, he's shown that he's pretty close to checking all three of those boxes. Third and seven. Blitz coming. Prescott has it blocked. Fires high. Trying to go far side to Noah Brown. But the ball was a little too high. And now what do you do if you're Dallas? Kind of in no man's land here. Yeah, I think you're in no man's land. I think at the very least you try to line up on offense. Maybe you get them to jump. Get a free five yards and then set up a fourth and two. But we'll see how aggressive Mike McCarthy wants to be. As you said, this... This is one of those tough positions on the field where a punt doesn't do you a ton of good. Yeah, too far for a field goal. And so they'll go for it. Play clock has run out. And there we go. There's the delay. Right. Delay game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Down. And so maybe they never had any intention at all for Mike McCarthy just to put some window dressing on it. Yeah, it's so it's so funny how often you see everyone knows it's coming, right? There's very there's a little likelihood that ball was ever going to get snapped, and how many times they're able to get the defense to jump and either take the five yard penalty or even get a free play and throw the ball down the field. So Brian Anger will punt it away. Jamal Agnew, terrific returner, back inside his own ten. Agnew's got six career return touchdowns on his resume. Fair catch just inside the 10. The Jags will start their opening drive there. So Dallas has their drive stall. We'll see Trevor Lawrence and the Jags offense next. In every game, there are three main components, players, rules, and the game within the game. But what it comes down to is skill. With each twist and turn, what lies ahead remains a mystery. One thing that's certain, if the Cowboys win, they're in. Well, Kate Hudson is correct. Cowboys win, they're in the playoffs. Big divisional game against the Eagles on Christmas Eve. And the Jaguars, even though they're 5-8, and eight, because they just beat the Titans, they've got a chance to win this division. But they pretty much have to win out. They have Tennessee the last week of the year. They'll start it on offense, get it go to Zay Jones, and that's a good start on the quick hitter from Trevor Lawrence. And that's what they've been doing well. Snap the ball, and bang, he makes a quick decision. Absolutely. And Doug Peterson and this front office, they've done such a good job understanding the future of this franchise is how do we build a support structure both with coaches and personnel around Trevor Lawrence. They went out, they add Zay Jones, they add Evan Ingram. Saw his big, big game last week. Trevor Lawrence is carrying it, but he's supported by a lot better team this year than he had last year. That was Ingram in motion. Here's ETN trying to get that run game going. We'll get a first down behind this offensive line, which doesn't get talked about on a national level. But I know we're talking the other day, and you think they're pretty good. I do. I think they got two really good young tackles, Cam Robinson, Jawan Taylor, but it's the center, the rookie center, Luke Fortner. They say he makes all the calls, all the checks. They say once he hears it once, he's locked in. I can't stress enough, KB, how rare that is for a young offensive lineman. ETN, nowhere to run there. Micah Parsons came in and helped make that tackle for maybe a yard against this Cowboys defense that for the first time last week, 
didn't have a sack all year. That was weird, but they got the big goal line stand when they needed it. They did, and, and, and Dan Quinn told us, he said, you know what, I actually think last week was good for us. Although they looked a little disjointed, had some tough, they have the turnover at the end of the game, they make the big goal line stand. Of course, that leads to Dak's game-winning drive. Said we've been tested, gotten a lot of unscouted looks. This is going to help us as the year plays on. Four-man rush. Lawrence back to throw over the middle and has a catch. It's Agnew just short of a first down. Jamal Agnew, it's pretty neat. He's an electric return man, and he's touching the ball more on offense than he ever has this year. Yeah, and they're doing a nice job, as you've seen so far early in, in the game with, with Zay Jones and now Agnew. As you mentioned, a lot of the stress has been taken off the O-line because the ball comes out so fast. They have a lot of dynamic players with the ball in their hand. Run after catch helps not only develop and settle in Trevor Lawrence, but it gets their best players the ball in their hands. Third and one. A little flip, ETN looking for a couple blocks, gets to the edge, first down and more, ETN loves to run outside and use that speed. And for the Jags, it has been a little bit of a roller coaster this season, right? Trevor Lawrence get on the cart, start off, everybody's happy, two and one, and then, uh-oh, the hair's flying, they've lost five in a row, sparks are flying. Again, it's all right, up around the loop-de-loop, -loop, three and two, coming off their best win of the year against Tennessee. No matter what, I can tell you one thing. The hair of Trevor Lawrence is always just, I mean, it's perfect. <laughs> it's, it's really good. But, you, you know, that, that graphic showed it perfectly. And that's expected. Sometimes young teams that have a lot of good young players that are starting to grow, you see a little bit of the ups and downs. On the fake, setting up, lofting one high. Had some time and had a chance to throw to Christian Kirk, but just couldn't get it to him. It's funny, we're meeting with him to, uh, this week, and really impressive to be around you can tell he's relaxed I, one thing I never thought I'd see in my life is Trevor Lawrence giving Greg Olson hair tips I could use it I, I, I don't have quite his hairline I told him enjoy it while you have it I don't know what his future holds but uh, his, his hairline he told us he gave us some tips I'm not gonna share them with the world but uh, <laughs> he was an impressive guy I'll tell you that he's gonna give up the inside ball is loose and I think the Cowboys got it Donovan Wilson is a guy who recovers it And so the first turnover over the game. And the Cowboys take advantage as ETN never really got a handle on it. Dallas football. Well, you can see Travis ETN, he takes the handoff. He never really has it, but look, he runs right into the back of his right guard, Brandon Sheriff, as he was trying to get that ball put away. You see he's kind of demonstrating what happened. The exchange wasn't real clean before he could put it away. He kind of runs into his big guard, knocks it out. Yeah, but now great field position for the Cowboys on their second drive on the fake. Prescott, time comes near side as Pollard making the catch inside the 35. And he gets down to about the 32, just short of a first down. Foyer Luicon on the tackle. Really the, you know, one of the big free agent signs they brought here and, and a steady veteran amongst a group of young defenders. Second and one. Pollard dancing around, runs into a wall and he's going to lose yards. Roy Robertson Harris, the big guy. And this is what we saw after last week, after the first quarter. You see Harris right there. He does a nice job holding the point. Derrick Henry got off to a fast start against him last week. And then the last three quarters, they really shut him down. It, it needs to look more like that, especially when Dallas gets into a lot of these second and short and third and short down in distances. Dallas goes three tight ends. They're going to run it to Pollard. Right side, cuts back. Good effort for Pollard. Boy, there was not a lot there, but he did enough to get the first down. Yeah, really nice job there by Pollard. He's kind of been their home run threat in the backfield alongside Zeke Elliott, who kind of handles more of the short yardage situations. But I don't think people realize, KB, you know, they see all the explosive runs, the run after catch in the passing game. But Tony Pollard is great running between the tackles, forces a lot of missed, a lot of force and a lot of missed tackles. You saw it there for the first down. 
Give it to him again. Right up the middle. It's Pollard inside the 20. He's got another first down for Dallas. As you were saying, Greg. Yeah, and it's another great example. I mean, look how many yards he gets after contact. Great job here at the point of attack with the double teams. Then take a look. All right, he sees the hole and he hits it. Now it's run through contact. There's one arm tackle from Aluakon. That doesn't bring him down. You know, he's picking up four or five yards after contact. And it's just rare to see a back who can be the home run hitter, but also just chug along and run the ball between the tackles. Run it here to Elliott, spinning his way inside the 15, and Ezekiel Elliott is down to the 10. As Kellen Moore getting this offense going, trying to take advantage of the turnover. So far, staying with the ground game. Eight runs, 34 yards on a second and three. Elliott again, dancing up the middle, Ezekiel Elliott is in for the touchdown. Well, one of the best one-two punches in the ground game in the entire league. Let's see if he gets in. That left elbow is not down. He's on top of the defender. I think that's going to stand. That's a great effort by Zeke Elliott. As long as that right elbow, that left elbow, I'm sorry, didn't hit the ground, I think he's in. Yeah, I would, I would kind of agree with you looking at that replay. And you know what, they agree with it as well. As it's a touchdown for Elliott, 10 yard run. He's now got touchdowns in seven straight games. And now Maher with the extra point. It's up and good. And so the fumble by Travis Etienne. Cowboys recovered, and there it is running into his own player. Dallas takes advantage with the Elliott touchdown and an early lead. As we welcome you back to TIAA Bank Field here in Jacksonville, Florida, on a gorgeous Sunday afternoon. Ezekiel Elliott with a 10-yard touchdown run, seven straight games with a rushing TD for him. That's the longest in the league. Got a lot of playing time early, but it was the turnover. And the fumble from Travis Etienne, the Cowboys took advantage. Jacksonville has been so much better in that turnover department this year than last year. Well, let's see how they do on their second possession. As Agnew will let it go over his head. Good blocking on that touchdown run, too, huh? Well, if you like run game, you're going to love this. It starts off as a right side run, but every play, typically on the back side, it's who can distort the defense. Watch the left tackle, Tyler Smith. Watch what he does. Bang. That's the cutback lane that Zeke Elliott forms. Oftentimes, the initial path of the back is not where the back hits the line. Typ typically, they want to bend it back. What a great job there by Tyler Smith, the young rookie playing left tackle. Yeah, so reaction from Travis Etienne after the fumble, too. So now a chance for redemption. Jags will start from the 25. Lawrence pressure right up the middle, and he is sacked. Micah Parsons gets home for his first of the game. And number 13 on the year. Well, they line up two guys outside. Micah Parsons is going to go with an inside stunt. Brandon Sheriff, the right guard, just kind of sets back. This threat here, they go fan, fan. These two have those two. But for a right guard to kick out on Micah Parsons, you can't overset him. He's so fast. He can change directions quicker than you can. And that's an early sack for the best player on the field. Yeah, third in the NFL in sacks coming in. Second and 17, stunt coming, Lawrence sees it, unloads it underneath, and there is Evan Ingram, who had a career game last week. We've got an injury update, let's go down to Aaron. Yeah, also a guy who had a big game last week, linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch for the Dallas Cowboys. He is questionable to return guys with a neck injury, Kev. Oh boy, he's had some issues in his past there as well in that department, yeah. And 14 tackles for him last week, and now Ingram flexing his left arm. And so there's concern there. You saw him kind of squeezing his hand together coming off the field. After that play, third down and seven. Ready. 
Four-man rush. Lawrence over the middle. Knocked away beautifully to Ron Bland. Well done. As Christian Kirk, the intended receiver, and a punt coming up. Yeah, really nice coverage here in the slot by Deron Bland. A little inside-out pivot by Kirk. Christian Kirk's probably the most productive slot receiver, him alongside Dallas's C.D. Lamb. So that's really nice coverage there in the slot by Bland to force this punt. So Logan Cook come on for his first punt of the day to Kevontae Turpin, who fumbled one last week. Booming kick, but returnable. Turpin from the 11. Out across the 25, and a good return for Turpin after a 60-yard punt. 14-yard return, and we get a flag on the field, I believe. So hang on one second. Let's sort this out. Play. Dead ball, personal foul. Return team number 54. Unnecessary roughness. After distance penalty, Dallas keeps the ball. First down, timeout. Yeah, so it's on Sam Williams on the return, and well, that's what they get him for. 15 yards backwards, but Dallas football. Back here in Jacksonville, and we're watching this during the break. This is Evan Ingram who went out, Greg, right, kind of holding his left set, left arm. Yeah, you see that left wrist as he got tackled on that short second down catch. His left wrist got bent underneath. We'll keep an eye on it. He had a huge game you mentioned last week, kind of a career day. Hopefully he's able to come back. Dallas backed up after the penalty on Sam Williams. So they started on their own 14. They started with a run to Pollard who works his way up to the 15. So one more look at Ingram again coming off that monster game last week and the wrist. Oh, you see it there. Yeah, you see it kind of got bent awkwardly when Barr took him to the ground. You see him coming out. Hopefully that's something he's able to work through and find his way back out there next possession. Prescott directing traffic. Pressure comes. So the middle has a completion a little short of a first down. It's Noah Brown. And so it'll bring up a third down and one. It's interesting Noah Brown making the catch because today you know, the Cowboys signed T.Y. Hilton during the week, the former Colt. He's inactive today. And Brown really a big reason why because if they make him active, they have to put someone else down. Third and short, they go quick. They get it to Pollard. We're going to get to the edge. He does. And he's got a first down. And so the drive continues. We remind you that there is still time to enter your six predictions for a chance at $100,000 of Terry's money on Fox Super 6. Just get your phone out now, download the free Super 6 app, and then enter your six picks in the NFL Sunday Challenge for a chance to win big. But just getting back to the T.Y. Hilton thing, I thought that was interesting. Not only him, but James Washington made his debut last week, so a couple of new receivers have to wait one more week for Hilton at least. Staying on the ground here is Dallas. And working his way is Pollard staying with it up to the 32. And, and to follow up on your point about uh, Noah Brown, so often everyone just looks at it. Well, T.Y. Hilton, he's a great receiver. He's a veteran. He can come in and help us and potentially be that third option along with CeeDee Land and Michael Gallup. But there's ramifications with a player like Noah Brown because of what he can do on special teams, because of his role on offense. So oftentimes it's not just receiver to receiver. It's what is that player's role within all three phases of the team. Washington in the game now. Blitz picked up. Prescott going to throw it out in the flat. Lamb in stride, rolling his way for what should be a first down. See where they mark him. And maybe have him just a hair short, and they will. It's Devin Lloyd in on the tackle. Yeah, and that's the other thing, too, with James Washington. You know, they remember, they signed him in the offseason. He's been out all year with a broken foot. He played last week, but it only had one target, and he dropped it. So it could be between those two. They're going to go quick on a third and short again. Elliott in the backfield. They're going to throw it, though. Prescott just lofting one up. Incomplete for Lamb, and there is a penalty flag. Trey Herndon on the coverage. So I think Dak Prescott thought the defense moved into the neutral zone. Defense number 37. The ball in place, that spot of the foul, automatic first down. 
So he's able to get the P.I. call, which yeah, I think I think he had that left arm of C.D. Lamb kind of hooked. But the reason Dak kind of came out, everyone just took off on a go route. I think he thought the defender jumped into the neutral zone. The center, Biata, snapped it quick, and Dak's just going back. So take a look. See, so I think it's a free snap. See how everyone's late off the ball? Now Dak is taught drop back. All four receivers are going to go vertical, and you get a free play. In this case, you force the pass interference. Yeah, it kind of worked out. Got 17 yards on the penalty. Final six seconds of the first quarter. Elliott, left side. Not much. Gets out to the 45, and that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. Cowboys get a turnover, turn it into a Zeke touchdown, and after one, it's 7-0 Dallas. This NFC East has been so good, right? The best division in football. See the Eagles right now playing the Bears scoreless. Cowboys can clinch a playoff with a win today and a huge Sunday night game, right? I mean, you got the Giants and Washington. They're both in the playoffs right now if it ended today. They tied a couple weeks ago, but that'll be a big game, no doubt. Look forward to watching uh, Mike and Chris on the plane ride home with that one. All right, 7 nothing. We start the second quarter back here in Jacksonville. With Mike Pereira, Aaron Andrews, Greg Olson, I'm Kevin Burkhardt. Second and eight. Prescott, a little flip. Oh, that was a neat little play to Noah Brown. See, you're talking about all his special teams play, and they get him a little gadget on offense for a first. Yeah, a little shovel, pa shovel pass. They use him. They kind of bring him. They brought him in in the first quarter a ton. They bring him here to come block at the point of attack. This time, they pull, and they just let him follow the guard, Zach Martin, and we just they just do a little shovel pass off the action to the left. Creative. But as you said, another great example of the versatility of a player like Noah Brown. Prescott, pressure, steps away, rolling, looking, firing, and completing. CeeDee Lamb has the catch and makes a move, and he's down near the 20. Nicely done by Dak Prescott, and Lamb has 15. Yeah, this is teaching tape in the pocket. All young quarterbacks, watch this. You hit your back foot, you feel pressure. Move up in the pocket. It just allows Tyron Smith, playing right tackle, to wash his guy wide. Out on the edge, find CeeDee Lamb. But that's great pocket movement. Look at this formation time. right now. An interesting one indeed. They're just going to run it with Elliott. Each receiver had like a lead blocker on the outside, so you wonder if they go back to that. Yeah, it's something to keep an eye on. What, what it is, it's just a math equation. He's going to take a look. I got five offensive linemen, of course, and the back, and then I got two guys split wide on each side. If it's even numbers on the perimeter, he'll throw it. If the box feels light because they overcommit wide, he'll hand it off. I think that's something they'll come back to, and don't be surprised to see him spit that ball to the wide side. Foley Fatakasi, who left the game for a moment, back in. A little ankle injury, as Aaron told us. Number 94 right in the middle for Jacksonville. Second and nine for Prescott. A lot of time. Going deep, going for the end zone. It is caught for the touchdown. Peyton Hendershot hauls it in. Well, we got our first tight end touchdown of the day, KB. We get one almost every time. They're going to run post, post, wheel. It's a day one play. Every team in the league has it. He gets matched up on a guy who typically pass rushes, Josh Allen. He's known as more of a sack artist. He's more of a pass rusher. Takes him on the wheel. Great ball by Dak Prescott. The young rookie gets a touchdown. Second one of the year for Hendershot. And a 10-play, 86-yard drive, and the extra point is good. Tight end touchdowns, Greg. I know you love it. Well, seems like every game we call, we get one. So Hendershot, the rookie, one-on-one, -on -one, contested ball, and he goes up and makes a play. Oh, there it is. There it is. Let's go. That was a really pretty drive and just a perfect throw from Dak Prescott to Peyton Hendershot for his second NFL touchdown. And now young tight end will get out on special teams coverage. Cowboys jumping out to a 14-0 lead. A little different than their start last week against Houston. Went sloppy play and turnovers got him behind and they came away with a last-second victory. 
So a great throw, but also that play had a great design, though, didn't it? It's got a great design, and for a very basic play, it really unmasks the defense. You're going to see the double post carries the safety in the corner. Now here's the matchup versus an on-the-ball pass rusher. You see Josh Allen, he walks off the line. He needs to carry the wheel all the way down the field, KB, when he originally lines up as a defensive lineman. He lines up as an edge rusher. That's tough duty, not terrible coverage, but just not really what he's known for. Great play call versus that particular coverage. And so now the Jags need to get back in this game as Lawrence and hand it off ETN. Nice moves out across the 30, and ETN's got a six-yard run. So the first two possessions, not so great. They had an opening drive. It started off well, and then the ETN fumble, which led to a score, and then a sack and a three and out and a punt, and now their third drive trying to you don't want to get too far behind with a pass rush like Dallas, right? Exactly, and, and I think the key is the reason we pointed out earlier in the first quarter the ups and downs of the season. They've struggled to start games fast. They're running again. Good hold that time. And then running into a wall right at the marker. And now pushing forward for a first down is ETN. He didn't have it initially, but that second surge, help, help, help from the line, got it done. And then the challenge today, when you don't start fast against this Dallas Cowboys team, offensively, Dallas, they're really good at running the ball, right? They get a lead. They're able to rely on that run game and those two backs. And then on the other side, right now when Jacksonville has the ball, you get down two scores early, you start dropping back maybe a little more than you want. That plays right into the hands of how this Dallas defense is built with this pass rush. On first down here is Lawrence. Looking to throw far side of the field. Has a completion. Marvin Jones has his first catch of the day. Well, it's interesting with ETN. The run game has been kind of quiet, and even Doug Peterson said, you know, we're just a little out of sync trying to get the line, and ETN sec you know, sorted out on the same page. Yeah, and where they're really struggling is between the tackles. That's where Doug Peterson told us, you know, the backs alignment and the way the linemen are setting up their double teams and coming off is a little out of sorts. Where ETN has had his best success is tackles to the sideline, running on the perimeter, and I think they've got to find a way to get him the ball in the passing game and let him turn into a run after the catch here yeah, they're just going to hand it off on a jet sweep it's agnew who breaks the tackle and has a first down such a good skill set for agnew that time on the jet sweep and it moves the chains yeah i think the, the style of the offensive line the style of the system you saw it there with agnew we said the same thing with etn they do pretty well out here on the boundary see agnew really nice timing on the jet sweep it took a quick second for dallas to figure out who exactly had the ball By the way, Evan Ingram is back in the game for the Jags on this drive. There he is in motion, so that's good news for them. On the fake, looking to get it to him. They do. Ingram in stride with a first down, down to the 40. He is so athletic, and he had his ups and downs with the Giants, but you're starting to see what he could bring to the table. Yeah, and a nice play design here. They start him in motion, and then they bring him back in. Everyone's thinking he's going to pin the end a little naked. The injuries, that was really what held him back in New York. He's a really talented guy. I had a chance back in 2020 during the COVID year. We didn't have offseason. He came to Charlotte for a few days, and we trained together. He's physically really impressive. He can run. He's done a nice job catching the ball. That was something he struggled with at times. But if they can continue to get consistent play out of him, that's a great weapon for any young quarterback. Little fake, couple of them, and now they're going to set it up. ETN has some room, and a block, and a first down. Beautifully designed play, and a great block from Brandon Sheriff for ETN to move the chains. Well, this is kind of something I was talking about before. Get him in space. They're going to come out here and show screen left to our right. Reverse, now they're going to dump it off. Get him the ball in space. Don't ask him to always run between the tackles. See big Brandon Sheriff out there in front. He's a little slow to get up. I think he's back in the huddle and should be okay. Nice play design off the fake reverse. Again, ETN that screen. Ready. Look at this. They're pulling out all the stops this time. Get it Agnew again. Why not? Makes it cut up the field, and he's inside the 10. Look at the play calls on this drive from Doug Peterson. And an 18-yard gain for Agnew. Yeah, every play has some misdirection. You see Agnew out here. He's going to take the toss. It's just a little toss reverse. 
Evan Ingram's got the end. <laughs> Ingram's got the end. I'm not sure if the end got him, but either way, he didn't make the tackle. <laughs> he did just enough, but nice play calling here. They needed to respond, falling down, falling behind 14-0, and this is a great drive. They need to convert to a touchdown. They love Christian Kirk down here, number 13 in motion. He's got seven touchdowns in the red zone. Here's Lawrence. He's going to give up the middle and down to about the six that time with the run with ETN as Barr is there on the stop. Jags overall 17th best in the red zone this year. And Lawrence can run it down here too. We saw him pull one last week against Tennessee. It was not a designed quarterback run. He made it a read on his own. And Doug Peterson said the whole time he pulls it, I'm yelling, no, no, no. Okay, good job. Touchdown. I don't see if he pulls it again here, but as you said, they're real good down here in the passing game. Lawrence looks, taps the ball over the middle. It's caught for the touchdown. Zay Jones and the Jags on the board. Well, right on cue, KB, you called it. They are so good in the red zone. They've thrown as many touchdowns in the red zone as any team. You'll see Zay Jones. It's just a little mesh route. Zay Jones and Tim Jones just run two crossers underneath each other. Nice ball out in front to allow Zay Jones to take it, turn it up. And that's a great answer by Trevor Lawrence in this Jacksonville offense. Extra point is up and good from Riley Patterson. Nice drive, nine plays, 75 yards, and the Jags on the board. Make it 14-7. Look at this AFC South and the Titans. They've been struggling even though they're in first place. Jags beat them last week and they play them on the final week of the regular season. So Jacksonville can win the division and get in the playoffs. Colts did not have a good day yesterday. That was that was tough. Biggest comeback in NFL history for the Vikings. Here's Turpin. That's like a huge hole up across the 30 and almost untouched out to the 35. As we go down to Aaron Andrews. Well, we just saw it there for the Jacksonville Jaguars, that great play calling that you both brought up. I talked to Evan Ingram this week, and he was talking about how Doug Peterson has helped so much with helping this team stay consistent when they're down. We saw it right there. They were down 14 points. He also talked, guys, about the swagger that Peterson and the offensive coaches have instilled in this group with the play calling, with their attitude. He said it's really helped us try to get this thing back on track. Yeah, you could tell, too, Aaron. I mean, there's just a feel... Peterson obviously knows what he's doing. And they're playing free and fun. Here is Prescott. A lot of time. Just going to throw it underneath to Elliott. And Elliott is brought down by his former high school teammate, Foyer Aluicon. Boys from back in St. Louis. So they know each other well. And Jason Peters has checked in the game at right tackle. Not a surprise, even though Aaron told us Tyron Smith his season debut. We knew he's kind of on a pitch count his first game today. Yeah, and how fortunate are you if you're the Dallas Cowboys and your swing tackle, the guy you bring in that, to relieve one of your starters, is probably a first ballot Hall of Famer in his own right. It's pretty incredible the talent they have up front. Here's Elliott. Got a first down out across the 45 up to the 48. Boy, you aren't kidding, right? I mean, you think about this offensive line, and they've been good all year. Tyron Smith back with just Hughes. They're all pros now, a right tackle. Zach Martin, who's going to be a Hall of Famer at right guard. You see him number 70. Jason Peters. The one's the best to ever do it for multiple teams, mostly the Philadelphia Eagles, who's now your swing tackle. It's incredible. It's unbelievable. On first down, Elliott on the ground. Game powering across midfield and a good strong run. So here's what you're talking about, about these vet and not veterans. Three of the best to ever do it all time on the same line. Yeah, I mean, these three guys are all on the all-decade team. I mean, these guys are generationally great players. To have all three of them at one point or another play for your starting five is it's pretty remarkable. Second and five on the fake. Prescott slings that on the flat. He's got a catch. Dalton Schultz, another tight end. He's got his first one of the day and a first down. It's January on Fox. The clock is ticking for the elite missing persons unit. Scott Kahn and Donia Ramirez and the new riveting series Alert. The two-night premiere starts January 8th, only on Fox. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 
Here we go, first down. Elliott, nice hole on the right side. Make that Pollard instead, excuse me, and Pollard's got eight yards. The run game has been a in use today for these Cowboys, hasn't it? It has, and it's really the variety of the run game that makes them so difficult to defend. You see Zeke Elliott, he's running between the tackles, a lot of traditional zone plays, and then with Tony Pollard, he can really run it all. It's a it's a pretty complicated run game to defend. Second and two, Prescott in trouble, and he's taken down for the sack. Jags have their second one today, and Josh Allen is a second in as many weeks. Take a look out here at CeeDee Lamb. I think he's got a shot there on the post. I think Dak started with his eyes to the right. Josh Allen working Jason Peters on the right side. Nice job with just a strong bull rush. Set up this third down. Third and four. A lot of time. Prescott over the middle, and it's caught for a first down. A dart from Prescott, and Noah Brown has another one. That's a big-time throw. They only rush three, so there's eight in coverage. We see Dak Prescott throw into a lot of these tight windows. This time, he's able to fit it right between the backer, right in front of Herndon, the defensive back, and that's a great throw in a tight window for a critical pickup of the first down. Cowboys moving the ball. They've got 189 total yards so far today. Noah Brown told you about the decision. He's playing. No T.Y. Hilton. He's playing well. There's Pollard cutting back. Pollard with a good strong run inside the 15. Yeah, take a look here. Watch what happens to Lamb. Josh Allen starts like he's going to rush, and then he's the eighth dropper, and he just takes out C.D. Lamb. I think that's where Dak was trying to work to that side of the field, was able to come through his progression. Because it was only a three-man rush, he had plenty of time, came back and found Noah Brown. But sometimes they call that chipping the chipper. Those DNs don't like getting chipped. Well, that time he chipped C.D. Lamb. Just looked like anger. Oh, a little zone read. Prescott has blocks inside the five. Prescott leaning forward. He's going to be just short. Down to the one. A 12-yard run for Dak Prescott, and it's first and goal. Yeah, well, now Kellen Moore in this run game, they're just showing off. You want to stop Pollard. You want to stop Zeke. Okay, fine. Now Dak Prescott's going to pull it. We used to run this with Cam. We called it ride peel. Dalton Schultz, the tight end, he gets out in front. He's the peeler. Nice physical finish there by Dak Prescott. There's like two play callers who yeah, are like flexing in front of the camera between Kellen Moore and Doug Peters. This is fun right now. Yeah, these last two offensive drives, this is this big time offensive ball. Jumbo formation for Dallas. Josh Ball comes in, extra lineman. Pollard the back, give it to Pollard. Stuffed. Nowhere to go that time for Pollard. Dewan Smoot was there, so was Aluicon. Yeah, Mike McCarthy knows a thing or two about calling plays too, even though he doesn't do it right now for Dallas. And he'll have time to think about this one as we get to the two-minute warning. 14-7, Cowboys. It's interesting looking at this in the break. Mike Pereira, is this a penalty on Dak Prescott, or should it have been, I should say? Kevin, I haven't seen one of those called, I think, ever since they put this, ever ever since since they they put put this helmet helmet rule in. in. I haven't seen one of these called, period. So it's a physical guy, but I wouldn't put that in the category of a foul. I right, see. That's why we have Mike Pereira. We were looking like, oh, that's interesting. There was no call on the field. No foul, as Mike tells us. But we do know 14-7, two minutes to go in the half. Second and goal for Dallas. Now down at the one. Yeah, I think these second and shorts, you bring in the jumbo. I love the play action here. Oh, like that. Dalton Schultz is open. Instead goes over the middle. And so is Noah Brown, who's got the touchdown. Great, great call coming out of the break. Jacksonville brought both of their safeties out of the game. Dallas sees it. They line up. They give a hard run action over here with the three-man bunch. Zeke takes it. He's trying to hit Dalton Schultz. No. Noah Brown's the late peeler. Second down on the one. That's the best time to play action. You still have third down if you don't get it. Everyone's thinking run. You come with pass. Maher with an extra point. It's up and good. How about Noah Brown's day? He's got four catches, 32 yards, his second touchdown of the year. 
He's been involved heavily in the Cowboys. Another big drive. Prescott is fired up. Take it back to 1995, the most popular show, a little show called Seinfeld. Not sure if you heard of it there. Michael Jordan, you know, he unretired. Things went pretty well for him. Patrick Mahomes was born wearing a Michael Jordan jersey. I mean, he wasn't born wearing it, but he wore it in that picture. And the Jaguars, they were, they were born too, their first season. And the Cowboys, it's the last time they were in the title game. That's a lot happened in 1995. It's also hard to believe it's the last time the Cowboys were in a title game. If they win this game today, they clinch a playoff burst, so that would be a good start for them. As uh, we check in, what's going on uh, coming up at the half with Kurt Menefee? Coming up at the Verizon Halftime Show, we'll replay the highlights from today's game and review the biggest plays of the half. Did somebody say replay review? Uh, no, I said we'll replay the highlights and review the biggest plays. Never mind, Mike. We'll see you at the half. Sorry. Poor Mike. Look, I mean, you got you got to throw Mike a bone there. You got to, you know, you got to come on, Kurt. Oh, that's so funny. Great. First and ten, Jacksonville. All three timeouts for each team. One fifty-five left in the half. See what they do here. Lawrence to throw. Stands in, going deep. Has a man in high. Yet Ingram on that route, but couldn't hit him. Yeah, and I think early on, they've got to get a couple completions. This is a critical junction in the game here, and really having three timeouts yourself is not the story. The fact that Dallas still has three timeouts is where it has to be a little bit of a concern with Doug Peterson. They get the ball to start the second half. They have an opportunity to go back-to-back -back possessions, but they need to get a couple completions. They don't want to just come out here and go pass, 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 punt, and give Dallas a chance with three timeouts. So easy completion, screens, inside draws. And Jags may have moved there. That's the indication. Offense number 17, five-yard penalty, second down. Yeah, I was a little surprised on that first down call. I know he had Ingram open there. He just kind of threw it over his head. But typically on first down, the goal is get the first first down. A couple check downs, easy high percentage completions. Try to milk the clock a little bit. Then once you get your first first down, you go into real fast, up-tempo, traditional two-minute style offense. Second and long. Lawrence runs away. Coming near side, there's Engel who makes a catch. He stays on his feet. Good effort. Out across the 25. Gets back across the original line of scrimmage. We've got a game break. Checking in with Carissa Thompson. Thanks so much, Kev. So the Bears were trailing 3-0 to the Eagles. But watch this. Justin Fields from midfield under pressure. Escapes the tackle. Going, going, still going. Watch this. Spin move. Beep. There we go. Is he going to get in? He does. It was ruled that his foot was out of bounds. David Montgomery would score on the next play. Extra point, no good. But what a run. Bears up by three. Kev? That is wild. I know the Cowboys and their fans like the looks of that because they play Philly on Christmas Eve. They're two games back now. Lawrence over the middle. Oh, it's dropped. That was a perfect throw, and Christian Kirk had a chance. Deron Bland maybe got a hand on it. Yeah, it's just straight man coverage. A nice route. Not only does he have a chance, he's going to pick up the first down. I think he scores. Deron Bland really sells out, ends up on the ground. If he catches that ball, wow. he's got a shot to go all the way. It was man coverage. There's nobody back here. But now here's the concern, KB. You're punting with a minute 30. Dallas has all three timeouts. Yeah. Turpin back deep. Calls fair catch and does so inside of the 25. A perfect throw by Lawrence Kirk, who's been great this year, could not hold on. And now the Cowboys up two touchdowns, all three timeouts. Chance to do some damage. Christmas triple header next Sunday. Packers and Dolphins right here on Fox at 1, followed by the Broncos and Rams at 4.30 on CBS and Nickelodeon, by the way. And then the Bucks and Cardinals finish things up on Sunday night on NBC. 21-7 our score here, 131 to go in the half. Cowboys have it with Prescott, who's had a great first half, gets it out to Elliott in the flat, or make it Pollard, who's out of bounds. And the Cowboys are really... High octane today. Look at the last three possessions for their offense. A 10 play and an 11 play drive for a touchdown. Yeah, I think this is a big test right now. This this Jacksonville defense 
It's a young defense. They're trying to find their find their way, going up against a great offense in Dallas. They need to come up with a stop here. They cannot let Dallas go get points before the half. Prescott, right side, has a short catch. It's Lamb who's got it. They'll get to the line. Yeah, you talk about this Jags D. Mike Caldwell, the defensive coordinator, played linebacker for a long time. And Remember, the Jaguars get the ball after the half. Prescott quickly over the middle. Pollard will get stopped by Aluakon. Just short of a first down. So it'll be a third down and one with under a minute to go. And now timeout on the field. At least the whistles. There we go. Jags call a timeout. And we'll be right back after these messages. I'm telling you that I shut the slider last night. So we just own a cat now? I closed it. Why don't we check the replay? No, no, no. That's... Come on. This What Really Happened replay is brought to you by Progressive. One thing no one would challenge, saving money when you bundle home and auto with Progressive. Just going to get the cat. So it'll be a third and one. Interesting that the Jags call a timeout there on third and one. Yeah, because it allows Dallas to preserve all three of theirs. So obviously Doug Peterson's counting on getting a big stop and getting another crack at having another possession going into half. Prescott, little option. Pollard is stuffed by Aluakon who read it all the way. And you hear the primal screams. It's a huge play. And I guess that timeout works. Well, there you go. You mentioned it. It was an interesting call. Aluakon's unblocked. That's who he's going to read. It's a read sprint option. Dak doesn't ever really make him declare. You have to try to get that end defender to take the quarterback before you option it. It's not something a lot of quarterbacks are comfortable doing. You don't see that in a lot of schemes. It is a short yardage play teams go to. But in that case, Foye Aluakon comes up with a huge play we mentioned this de this young defense they need to find a way to stop it well they got the big stop and now Doug Peterson with just under a minute to go is going to get another offensive possession well Louis Kahn is a stud he led the NFL in tackles last year he leads them the league this year and he's got nine tackles in this first half and the Jags will have one timeout left they use their second timeout there will have an opportunity at least Agnew and a short punt, going to let it go, and Cowboys bounce down around the 15-yard line. Uh, it's been a really entertaining and fun first half, and just like that was a test for the young defense, I think if you're a Jags fan, you say, okay, here's our young quarterback. you got a few seconds left, and you get the ball in the second half. So uh, a chance here to really make some noise against a very good team. Yeah, and I think just like we said the last possession, they're only a minute less on the clock. This is a great opportunity, down 14, to get back-to-back -back possessions and find a way to get two scores and creep back into this game. So expect Doug Peterson early here, try to get a couple conversions, get a couple completions, get the first down, and then go fast and try to get a field goal. So here's Lawrence against a four-man rush, steps away to run. He's just going to tuck it in and run up across the 20, but only one timeout left and the clock ticking. And the Jags will save that timeout, 30 seconds left in the half. Yeah, they got to get a little more urgency here. Under 30 seconds. She said they only got that one timeout. Lawrence has time. Firing and it's caught up across the 30, up to the 35. It's Zay Jones. Who's got his third catch, and the Jags will use their final timeout with 16 seconds to go. And we'll be right back after this message from State Farm. Jake from State Farm. I really want that personal price plan. So I'll admit it, I'm a bath bomb guy. Dude, you do not need to get that personal. The State Farm Personal Price Plan simply helps you create an affordable price just for you. For real? Who's ready for their jazz bath? No? <laughs> Who is that guy? Jazz bath? Call or click to get a quote today. Like a good neighbor? State Farm is there. Realistically, the Jags need 30 yards and 16 seconds without a timeout to try a field goal. Yeah, and they're right on the border, KB, of having enough time, depending on how long the completion. If they get tackled inbounds, 16 seconds is really close to have enough time to line up and clock it and get another down. And we got a whistle. Looks like the Cowboys first will use timeout, Dallas, 30 seconds. their first timeout. 
Well, Christian Kirk, we showed you last time, had that drop, and you talked about could have been a touchdown. Three targets, no catches. He's got 67 catches on the year. This guy who came in leading the team in receiving with 874 yards, so that's been one anomaly. Obviously, the Jags had a fumble, which cost them early. Other than that, it's been a pretty entertaining first half of football, to be honest. Both teams doing some really good things. Cowboys have had some big drives. Dak Prescott, a terrific first half. Two touchdown passes for him. 13 straight completions for Dak as well. Now it's Lawrence. 16 seconds left. Pressure comes. Steps away. Throws. Incomplete. He's about to get dropped by Micah Parsons. And now 10 seconds left. Yeah, smart play. Lived to play another down. He sensed that he was going to be sacked. He does not want ETN to catch that ball. Obviously, the clock would expire, and they'd go into the half. So he just throws it at his feet. Ten seconds here. If you can get the ball out of bounds, you have to expect Dallas. All their defenders are going to be out towards the boundary, playing outside leverage, meaning they're going to line up on the outside shoulder a few yards wider than the Jacksonville offensive receivers and just a tackle inbounds, and the half will go out. Yeah, J. Ron Curse is playing so far out of your screen right now, you can't even see him. Ten seconds, Lawrence going deep down the sideline, and it's incomplete. Marvin Jones, the closest receiver. And now this will probably be the final hurrah. Yeah, you got to try to get some sort of outbreaking route, something on the sideline that you can, of course, pick up the first down. And also stop the clock but to get 10 yards and only six seconds not a high likelihood here and that's why they're just going to run it to etn who sprints up the middle with a big hole and into dallas territory well that'll take us to halftime first half stats today brought to you by mercedes-benz you like offense, you're seeing it here in this first half. Is ETN a little, maybe a little banged up there. So here are these numbers. Cowboys getting some good production on the ground. Prescott, obviously, a great first half as well. Jags had the turnover, which really hurt them on the fumble. And it's the Cowboys up 21-7 to at the break. Jags will get the ball to start this third quarter. Time for Kurt Menefee in L.A. with the guys. The Verizon Halftime Show starts right now. Dancing up the middle, Ezekiel Elliott in for the touchdown. We got our first tight end touchdown of the day, KB. Zay Jones and the Jacks on the board. Another big drive. Prescott is fired up. And today's game flow brought to you by Progressive. Gorgeous day in Jacksonville. Cowboys 21, Jaguars 7. And the Jags get the ball to start this second half. The Cowboys... Quite a difference from last week. They look very, very sharp. Jags had one excellent drive. Also had a turnover, which hurt them. Let's see what they can do with this opening possession here. Well, they will start on their own 25 as we go down to Aaron Andrews. Kevin, I spoke to Doug Peterson going into the half. He said he was happy with the way his offense was kind of settled down there after the second and third drive and defensively, or, or sorry, staying with the offense, only one sack on Trevor uh, Lawrence. And he said, look, we did a good job with Micah Parsons. That's a win right there. They thought the protection was good. Now what do we need to see here in the second half as they have the ball? He said, well, it would be nice to drive down this field pretty quickly and score. He said, we're going to still try to stay with the run here, but try to mix it up like we did on our one scoring drive. You're right, though, Aaron. Parsons had a sack early, but then they did a nice job. That was the only sack Dallas had. Let's see how they respond here. Start this half. Lawrence give to ETN. There's not much there. Kind of like you said, Greg, we were talking about the half. You know, you I feel like this is a pretty big drive, even though it's the start of the third quarter, because you just don't get the sense that Dallas is done scoring. Yeah, and I think a lot of that is just Dak Prescott seems to be in a great rhythm. Kellen Moore's calling a great game. They're able to run the ball effectively. They're able to put the ball in the air effectively. So if you're Jacksonville and you got a match score for score, to stay behind multiple scores throughout this second half could be a tall task. Four-man rush. Quick go over the middle. Ingram's got the catch. Upended right around the first down. They're going to mark him about a half yard short, so it'll be third and one. 
Ingram's got three catches for 29 yards. And something we saw last week when Houston kind of gave Dallas a little more of a run than, than a lot of people around the league expected, it was they found themselves in a lot of these third and shorts where now the run game's on the table, the play action, the, the pass. You don't want to be in third and long with these pass rushers. Houston had some success last week. That's a good start. Just a little sneak. Got a couple yards. Keep it going. Yeah, that's the formula, right? Be efficient on first and second down and try to convert first downs early in drives or at the very least set up third and short and take some pressure off your offensive line from having to block what's probably one of the top two or three defensive line pass rushing units in the entire league. Jags go five wide. Blitz is coming. Lawrence, lofty one, has a man wide open, and he's got it for the catch. It's Kirk. Christian Kirk's first catch of the day, and it's a biggie. Well, that's a great matchup. They got Christian Kirk in the slot. Anthony Barr, the middle linebacker, he's walked out over the inside receiver. In this case, Christian Kirk, they just run a little switch release. He just kind of chops his feet and then hits outside, and that's a matchup pre-snap. If you're Trevor Lawrence and you're scanning the field, you take a look and you see your best slot receiver matched up with the linebacker. That's where the ball's going. Yeah, 30 yards on that one to Kirk. And a first down, a quick hitter. Get it to Ingram in space, looking for blocks, getting around the edge inside the 30. Aaron, let's let you finish your thought. Go ahead. <laughs> well, that could be scary. Hey, Mike McCarthy talking to him coming out of the half defensively. He said when Jacksonville was on that scoring drive, they threw everything at us. So we've got to be on guard for that. He knew that the Jags were going to try to keep going with the run here, which we've seen. So that was his main focus. And guys, Leighton Vander Esch, he has been downgraded. He is out with a neck injury. Oh, man, he missed seven games in 29. 19 with a neck issue as well, so that's concerning for Dallas. Here's ETN, left side with a nice seam. ETN's got a first down and a good looking opening drive in this third quarter. Yeah, that's a better use of ETN in the run game. Watch big Juwan Taylor, the right tackle. He's going to be the second puller along with Brandon Sheriff. Watch the job he does. Bang, right up in the middle. But you see, that's it. Tackle out. That's where ETN is comfortable. That's where he can use his athleticism. He's very elusive in the open field, and we've seen them do a much better job so far in this game using the talented running back. And he's got 55 yards rushing. I know he had the fumble earlier, but he's had some nice runs. Lawrence to throw here. Going end zones. A Jones incomplete. Pretty good coverage from Trayvon Diggs. Seven on seven there. And that's a, that's a dangerous throw there. Diggs has probably the best ball skills in the entire league out of any defensive back. You see Dan Quinn in the booth. You can see Trevor Lawrence. He's got some pressure in his face. He just kind of throws this one up there. Fortunately for him, he threw it wide enough that it was out of bounds. But number seven, Diggs, if he's around that ball and he gets his hands on it, more often than not, he's going to come down with the pick. Lawrence. Kirk has another catch. It almost broke it, but Bland got enough of the tackle to force him out of bounds. Bring up third down. We're talking about Dan Quinn and this defense. It's funny, they came off a game where it was a tough game for Dallas. They pulled out the win, and DQ was like, oh, I, I loved it. It was a challenge. It really, <laughs> I mean, only Dan Quinn could have that outlook about how the team responded, but they won. To Michael Hasty in the backfield now on a third and six. Lawrence, pressure coming, almost spun into the sack, stays on his feet, lofting end zone, has a man high, incomplete. Oh, Agnew was open and Lawrence just could not connect. Yeah, he kind of lost his footing. You mentioned it. He kind of spun out from the pocket, but he almost spun into where the pressure was coming off his edge. It wasn't bad job there by his left tackle, Cam Robinson. But he was able to keep his balance, but it kind of threw off his timing. But you mentioned it. Agnew is open. He goes scramble drill. Trevor Lawrence just puts a little too much on it. Sails it out the back of the end zone. A couple high throws from Lawrence. Meanwhile, here is the field goal attempt from 33 out. And it's good from Riley Patterson. So an opening drive, not what they wanted, but they get a field goal and make it 21-10 here in the third. 
Beautiful TIAA Bank Field here in Jacksonville, Florida. Good crowd, a lot of Cowboys fans today, but a lively group and a perfect, crisp December day here in Florida. 21-10, Cowboys lead the Jags. Jags had a nice drive there. Lawrence has made some nice plays today, but he had a couple throws that have been high as well. Today's Next Gen Stats, powered by AWS, it's Zach Prescott. And Greg, let me translate this for you. He's been good. Yeah, that's a, that's a really nice way of saying <laughs> he's completed 23% of his passes over what the expected rate is, meaning they take all the passes across the league and say, all right, what would the baseline be expectation of completing these passes? And to be 23% over what that baseline is, that's just, we spoke earlier about how much pressure is on this Jacksonville offense to match this Dallas offense, and that's because of how well so far today Dak Prescott has played a quarterback. On first down, they're going to try to get the run going again with Elliott up across the 25-yard line. And, Lew uh, yeah, Lewicon in on another tackle. He's been very active today. Give him a good amount of money to come here to Jacksonville. Three-year, $45 million deal, and he's lived up to it. He really has. I mean, even the last couple years, I know the Falcons kind of had been struggling, rebuilding down there, but he always stood out. Over the middle, nearly intercepted. Jack sent a blitz, and Devon Hamilton dropped, got his hand on it, third down. Yeah, nice job there by Hamilton. You see him, he takes a couple steps. That's to engage the blocker, and then he just backpedals right into that little middle zone pocket. They call that an OTB. It means the receiver's going to run over the ball. It's exactly where they put that plugger. Big 52 gets his hands on it to set up third down. He's got a lot of bodies up in here. Third and eight. Prescott stands in, delivers a strike to CeeDee Lamb for a first down. Lamb cuts back, gets a block, still going. Lamb inside the 40. Huge play on third and long to C.D. Lamb. He got a block from Michael Gallup. And a first down for the Cowboys in a gain of 39. Well, few if any in the league get more production working out of the slot. And he just runs away from coverage. I mean, he just wins fast. Trey Herndon is the nickel corner. And when he catches that ball, he's six yards away. And then the run after catch is fantastic. He is hard to match up with there in the slot. All day, Prescott lofting, going for it again to Lamb, who's got it. C.D. Lamb, a couple big ones back-to-back. -back. Well, Jacksonville might want to reconsider some of this man coverage, because right now, Herndon 37, he just cannot match up with C.D. Lamb, whether he's out wide, whether he's in the slot. He's running wide open all over the field right now. They might want to go to some zone. They might want to start just putting some bodies in space and... See if they can get this passing game under control. Just like that, Lamb's over 100 yards on the day. Six catches, 101 yards. Elliott right up the gut. Ezekiel Elliott inside the five. All right, this offense today is just picture perfect for Dallas. They're going to go quick here. Looks like man again, three over three to the right side. Elliott, nowhere to go. Dewan Smoot was there first. And now a third down. They can get a first down down at the two, so it's not third and goal. Yeah, you mentioned it, Kellen Moore. Sometimes certain games, play callers, and more often than not, Kellen Moore the last couple years has found himself in this category. They just get into such a rhythm. They get such an understanding of what their team is succeeding with, what tendencies they can take advantage of on the defense, and run and pass working so well together for this Dallas offense. Third and four. Prescott to throw. Runs away from a sack. How did he get out of that one? Motioning end zone, throwing incomplete. It was Gallup, the intended receiver. I thought he was dead to rights there, but he kept the play going. Well, he's unblocked. Devin Lloyd, that linebacker, 33, he hits him. 
But listen, don't think that some of these roughing the passer calls that have happened the last couple years, the last couple weeks, aren't in these guys' heads. He thinks he's got them, doesn't want to take them to the ground, and he pulls off, but he forgets Dak Prescott's a big, strong guy, and he runs out of it. I mean, he's dead to rights on the sack, and he just stops hitting them. That was so odd. Nonetheless, it didn't hurt him because the defense got a hold, and so now Brett Maher attempt a 24-yard field goal. Kick is up and perfect. So Dallas answers Jacksonville's field goal with a field goal of their own. And it's 24 to 10 here in the third. Well, we showed you before the break on that third down. Devin Lloyd, he comes on a pressure. He thinks Dak Prescott throws the ball. And we've seen all these guys get these roughing the passer calls by taking them too. You see Devin Lloyd, he kind of turns and looks not realizing that Dak Prescott still had the ball and Dak is a big strong dude you got to hit him to get him down but we've trained our defensive players KB to be so cautious around the quarterback that they're lucky that didn't turn into a scramble drill touchdown it's a great call though because the pump fake got him and he didn't want the penalty so you could see what he was thinking well Saturday we can't wait special day of football on Fox and the biggest game of the year is Jalen Hurts and the Eagles and a big NFC East matchup against Dak and the Cowboys. Christmas Eve, Saturday, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Philly beating Chicago 17-6. to So they will go into that game. If it holds, if both scores hold, and there's a long way to go in both games, the Eagles with a two-game lead. So Dallas, it's a must because the Eagles beat them earlier in the year. Humongous game. Well, So here are the Jags, opening possession field goal in the third. Get the pass game going to Jones, or make that Ingram who's got the catch. And we had a game break. Let's say hello to Carissa Thompson. Hello, Kevin. So the Eagles were up 10-6 to in Chicago, opening drive in the second half when Jalen Hurts punches it in from one yard out. His second of the day. Eagles lead this one 17-6. Kevin? Uh, Jalen Hurts has 12 rushing touchdowns on the year. We've got an injury timeout. Dorrance Armstrong, terrific pass rusher, is down for Dallas. Back after this. Well, we saw Dorrance Armstrong down before the break. Take a look at his right knee. He kind of gets his right foot stuck in the turf and looks like he hyperextended that leg. He's having a career year, eight sacks. Big reason this defensive line for Dallas is as good as they are alongside Micah Parsons. So I got to hope he's all right. Snoop Connor in the game right now and works his way up. And he's got himself a first down, the rookie. Fifth round draft pick, only 16 offensive snaps all year, so he gets a little taste. Yeah, Armstrong has been great, and he had a right ankle sprain that he's playing through. Well, you just hope that he's okay. So how about Connor getting an opportunity? Guy that only started a couple games in college, got plenty of reps, but not as a starter. And again, didn't play much at all this year. Maybe getting a series here. Going to fake it to him. Lawrence in trouble, throws it away. He had no option there. Demarcus Lawrence blew that play up. Yeah, and the best thing Demarcus Lawrence did, oftentimes it's the, it's the details. It's the small things that these guys do. Evan Ingram was coming across on a little underneath. They call it a hide route. And before he pressured Trevor Lawrence, he just shoves him right in the back. And that was just a slight little knock that didn't allow Trevor Lawrence to get him the ball right in front of him and forced him to throw the ball over his head. You know, oftentimes make a big deal about the big plays, but it's the little details. Lawrence stands in, fires, and it's an interception. Dallas has got a Duran Bland. And the second turnover for the Cowboys defense. Bland, his fourth interception, the rookie, making a big play intended for Kirk, but Bland says, uh-uh, Cowboys in a great spot right now. Yeah, and this is just a misread by Trevor Lawrence. You're going to see Evan Ingram. He's going to run the post. Christian Kirk's going to carry the seam. This is a busted coverage here by Dallas. They both stay on the front side with Kirk. Evan Ingram is wide open on the crosser. See Trevor Lawrence kind of getting that hand looked at. He knows he just didn't quite see that picture clearly. And 
Dallas made a mistake on the back end, but was still able to get the pick. That's just sometimes you just don't see it, KB, and you just throw the ball in the wrong spot. Uh, Dallas now a chance to put the hammer down with Pollard who gets swallowed up. Well played. Arden Key was there, and so was Dewan Smoot, who's had an active day in the middle of that defense. Well, there's Dorrance Armstrong. And he's walking off the field for Dallas. And there's another injury for Dallas right now. And that is Jason Peters. Told you that he's been rotating in and out for Tyron Smith. And now Tyron Smith coming back on the field. Smith making a season debut if you just turned us on. Had an avulsion fracture of his left knee. Also a hamstring tear. And back at right tackle today. Hasn't played that position since his rookie year. But he's on kind of a pitch count. Now Peters has been subbing for him. We'll take a break and hope he's okay. Second down. Prescott over the middle. Caught and breaking a tackle is Dalton Schultz, who gets stymied at about the 35. And more on Tyron Smith with Aaron. Yeah, when I was coming out of halftime with Mike McCarthy, Tyron actually ran right past us. And I said to Mike, how do you think he's done? He said, I think he's doing great. He told me I'm the one that's holding him back. He would play this entire game if I asked him to, but we're trying to ease him in since his injury. And now we'll see the update on Jason Peters. But remember, Mike McCarthy saying he'd love to have his starting five offensive line by next week, guys. Yeah, no doubt. 32 snaps for Smith so far. Third and four Cowboys. Prescott rolling away from pressure, throws on the run, it is knocked away. Andre Sisco with a big hit. Yeah, you're going to see a defensive lineman, Dewan Smoot. He carries Pollard down the field, which is pretty impressive. And then you said it, number five, Sisco, he came in and laid a blow right to the midsection of Pollard to knock that ball. But give credit to Dewan Smoot. That's a big man covering Tony Pollard about 15 yards down the field up the sideline. And now it'll be a 53-yard try for Brett Maher, well within his wheelhouse. He was good from 57 in pregame warm-ups. And this kick is up, and it is through. And so the Cowboys extend their lead to 27-10. Well, I'll tell you one thing, long way to go in this game, but if you are a Cowboys fan, you watched last week, and it was ugly at times, but they won. And now you know the, the Eagles are on the horizon on Christmas Eve. This is a pretty good tune-up. They look good today. They look really good, and they look good on both sides of the ball and really in all aspects, and specifically offensively. If they can continue to have this balance, meaning when the game's on the line, they can continue to run the ball at will with a lot of variety and different personnel. And then, of course, when Dak Prescott takes care of the ball and he's this efficient in the passing game with the weapons he has around him and this offensive line coming together, they're as good as anybody. Yeah, I see this offense has been humming. And you think about this, since Prescott returned from the injury that caused him to miss five games, that fractured thumb. I mean, they're six and one. The offense is first in points, third down, the second in yards in red zone. I mean, they are scoring and moving the ball. Just the turnovers that have hurt a little bit. It almost cost them last week, but it didn't. Up 27 to 10 right here. Now the Jags have a big hill to climb. Well, I want you to join Fox Sports in giving the gift of opportunity this holiday season by supporting nonprofit partner Sports Biz Camps and its efforts to change the lives of underrepresented high school and college students through the sports business. Visit sportsbizcamps.com to learn more. And so now Trevor Lawrence, who had not thrown an interception in over 200 pass attempts, who's been a little off today, some throws he's missed, but had some good moments. And needs some points and needs them soon. Get it out to ETN. Well, the turnovers today have clearly been an issue. Jaguars on their first possession. ETN here on a promising start to the drive. Runs into Brandon Sheriff. Cowboys recover. They would go on to score. And then Lawrence with the pick right here. Defense held them to a field goal, but that's still 10 points off turnovers. And when you're playing a team like Dallas, it's 10-3. and three. Just can't give them away. 
Yeah, and Jacksonville's defense, they're doing their part. The last two drives, holding the field goals. This offense needs to come to life. Etienne on the outside, that'll help. First down and more, out to the 40. And it's interesting, we came on, Greg, talking about Trevor Lawrence and so many of the good things that he's done, coming off a career-best game. And Doug Peterson said, you know, I took the job. He was raw. He said, I told him, just stick with us here, and we're going to make you into a really good quarterback. Yeah, Doug said, you know, when I, when I consider, when I, when I evaluated Trevor Lawrence going into the season, in my mind, he was a rookie all over again, right? We saw him play a ton of games at Clemson, one of the most, you know, prolific college quarterbacks in history but he was young had a lot to learn about the nfl game and he's made a lot of progress especially in these last five weeks there has on the fake here pressure coming rolls away steps in has a man jones is open he's got it inside the 10 diving for the end zone touchdown there is a flag back at the line of scrimmage so hang on Defense number seven. That penalty is declined. Touchdown. And it's a 59 yard score from Lawrence to Jones. Well, right on cue. He keeps the play alive. A little double chatter move. We thought coming in that they would try to go after Kelvin Joseph. Kelvin Joseph, the corner in Dallas, number one. He's had some struggles here and there playing opposite digs. He gets a lot of attention. Zay Jones goes up. He sits him down with the chatter. Runs right by him in perfect ball at the perfect time for Trevor Lawrence. And now the extra point is up and good. And so, talk about Lawrence in his, quote, rookie year. Making some big strides. That was a beauty. 59-yarder to Zay Jones, and here it is. And it all starts with protection. Watch the fight by Chris Manhurts, the, deep, the tight end here for Jacksonville. This is what gives time. He's fighting, he's fighting. That allows Lawrence to get out on the perimeter. Gives Zay Jones enough time for that, that stutter go. It takes a lot of time for those deep developing routes. Give credit to the protection. Credit to Trevor Lawrence, and of course a great route there to put Jacksonville back into this game. That's the longest in a career for Trevor Lawrence. And he's got two touchdowns today, giving 22 on the year. And that's the kind of thing that Doug Peterson was talking about. Got in there, rolled away from pressure, and threw a dart to Jones, who did the rest to get to the end zone. So the Jags have some life. Tell you what. You're a Dax fan after last week. you got to like the response, right? This is a game that Dallas, at times you feel like they could pull away here, but they're hanging in. No question. And sometimes when you got a young and, all, you know, even the veterans, they're all here from new places, kind of a new beginning here. It's impressive. Here is Turpin taking it out, runs into his own man, and he's down to the 15. I mean, listen, after we saw the Vikings-Colts game yesterday, 33-point lead isn't safe. What is safe? Here's Turpin trying to be aggressive. Daniel Thomas was down there, forcing to run into his own guy. And now, see if this Young's Jags defense can step up and make another play against the Cowboys offense, which has been clicking. 10-point game, 3.51 to go in the third. Jason Peters back in at right tackle. They will throw it. Blitz coming. Prescott in trouble. And down he goes. Arden Key with the sack. This was max protection, KB. They only had two guys out in the route. Take a look at Arden Key. He's going to come. But look at all these blockers. This is max protection. Arden Key's just going to continue to work on the left tackle. Tyler Smith and just keeps winning. Dak had nowhere to go with the ball. And Arden Key's able to bring him down for a big loss. Crowd's into it. Second and 18. Prescott in trouble again, running away and looking, and it's high, and it's intercepted! 
The Jags have it. Jenkins has it. Down to the 20. Penalty at the end of it. Ray Sean Jenkins with his second pick this year, and now we'll see on the flag. After the interception during the return, illegal block in the back, intercepting team number 33. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down, Jacksonville. Yeah, the pressure forces him out, and he has Dalton Schultz in front of him, and he just airmails it right into the hands of Rayshon Jenkins. This Jacksonville defensive line, they're making their presence felt. The last two plays, they're all over. And then take a look. Here's the block in the back. Sometimes these defenders, KB, they get a little excited when one of their guys gets the ball in their hands, and they're all looking for him to score, and sometimes they just get a little ahead of themselves, and... Uh, they're not used to blocking in space, but nonetheless, what a big stand again. We mentioned this Jacksonville defense. They're coming through time and time again. Little flip here, some trickery coming back. Why not? Agnew's got it. Gets a little block. Has a lot of room down to the 10. Well, we've seen a lot of this razzle-dazzle today out of this Jacksonville offense. Take a look at the big lineman. Luke Fortner, 79, he's out here in space. He's the center, leading on this reverse. Great job downfield by the wide receivers. Sometimes they sudden change. You either see a deep shot in the passing game or any sort of trick misdirection play. In that case, it's exactly what Jacksonville came up with. A 30-yard run for Jamal Agnew, and now it's first and goal. And they give it to ETN, it goes nowhere. J. Ron Curse came up to make that stop. You know, similar to what we said about this Jacksonville defense needed to kind of bow up here towards the end of the first half and continue into the second. Now Dan Quinn's unit on, on the defensive side for Dallas. You know, your team, your offense puts you in a bad spot. Quick sudden change turnover on your side of the field. They need to come up now with a red zone stop and force Jacksonville to three and kind of stop the bleeding a little bit. Lawrence, pressure, in trouble, gets away, Lawrence throws on the run, it is incomplete. Ingram had a chance at it, it'll be a third and goal. Carlos Watkins, big number 91, he has him dead to rights in the middle. Somehow, Trevor Lawrence gets out and he puts a great ball right on Evan Ingram and he just can't quite get it he's wide open balls a little low you got to catch it you got to bail out your quarterback when he makes an unbelievable play to keep it alive but Evan Ingram can't quite come up with it third and goal Lawrence lofting in so caught for the touchdown Marvin Jones Yeah, we mentioned it earlier. Teams, when they see Kelvin Joseph one-on-one, -on -one, they want to go great route here by Marvin Jones. He goes inside, kind of throws him by with that outside arm. See Trevor Lawrence, he's going there the entire time. He's just buying some time for Jones to come out of his break. And a minute ago, this game seemed like it was done. 27-10, Jacksonville has stormed back both sides of the ball. We got ourselves a ball game. Well, the interception... Really got it going, the pressure, and then Rayshon Jenkins with the interception, even after the penalty, 30-yard run to Agnew, and then that extra point is up and good. And these Jaguars, these young Jaguars, two touchdowns in two and a half minutes, and it's a three-point game now, 27-24. And I feel like we were just talking about, as you see, the touchdown to Marvin Jones. We were just talking about Doug Peterson and his impression of Trevor Lawrence. How's he done the last two and a half minutes? <laughs> well, it's pretty impressive. Since Trevor Lawrence threw his pick, the defense comes back. They get a pick of their own, which sets up the short field. And these last couple possessions, Trevor Lawrence has come to life.
He's throwing the ball accurately. He's throwing the ball on time. He's buying time with his legs. This is pretty high-level quarterback play by both these guys today. Yeah, three touchdowns for Lawrence today to go along with that interception. Prescott's been really good until that last pick. And you see their numbers. They've both been very, very productive, each with a turnover that has been costly. And each with a rating over 105. So this game is really turned around. Cowboys will get it up by three with so much time left here late in the third quarter. Turpin. Spins and nowhere. Doesn't even get to the 20. As Chad Muma, the rookie, in on the stop. So I'm fascinated here. We showed you the graphic. The one thing for Prescott, his interceptions, it's been an issue. How aggressive are they right now? The aggression worked in the first half, but coming off an interception the play calling fascinating yeah i don't think if you're kellen moore or you're mike mccarthy i don't think your 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 program here and your plan changes one bit he had a little pressure kind of sailed the high ball that cannot change how well dak prescott has played you still have to stay aggressive on early downs just continue to do what you have done throughout this entire game and put aside the interception and they'll run it here with elliot trying to stretch to the outside elliot does get outside and across the 20. For Rayshon Jenkins, who just had the interception, knocks him down. Elliott's had an active day today. Leads the team in carries and yards. 13 for 58 and a touchdown for him. As we play the final minute of this third quarter. Elliott again. Jump cut. Tripped up. Nicely done by Josh Allen. That would have been a clear first down, and now brings up third down. Yeah, so often, though, in the NFL, all teams, you see here on this second down run, you mentioned the jump cut, just couldn't quite pull his legs out, but you see teams kind of overcorrect. So often, though, when you have a veteran quarterback who you trust, like Dak Prescott, the interceptions and the turnovers, they can't scare you away from your gameplay. They can't scare you away from your style. Just stay aggressive. You got to trust your quarterback. They don't have to run a play here if they don't want. Yeah, they're trying to get a free play here and force them to jump. If not, they'll just take the quarter. Yeah, exactly. Jaguars don't fall for it, and we hit the end of the third quarter. Doug Peterson has won a Super Bowl before, and he's gritted. He knows his young team is building some character today. Three-point game. We start this fourth quarter from Jacksonville. What a fun game so far. 27-24 Cowboys. Jags have stormed back a couple of touchdowns in two and a half minutes. And now a third and seven for Dallas. C.D. Lamb, this has been the guy he's targeted in the slot one-on-one. -on -one. See if they stay man. They run a stunt. Prescott runs away from pressure. Arden Key coming after him. Prescott going to turn around and run and dive. And Dak Prescott is not going to get there. Roy Robertson Harris was chasing after him. So was Arden Key. Well, right on cue. They know where that ball was going. Take a look. They just straight double teamed CeeDee Lamb. Herndon played him outside. Andre Sisco, the safety, he inserted. Dak was trying to throw the ball inside to CeeDee Lamb. Great job by Jacksonville there. They know where his number one target's been all day. They put two guys on him. Remember, Agnew, extremely dangerous returner. Six return touchdowns in his career. Back deep for Jacksonville. Anger, spiraling, booming kick, and a great one. Agnew calls fair catch at the 25. So we look at this playoff picture in the NFC, and here's what we got. The Eagles, the number one seed, they are at 12-1, and one, winning by four right now in Chicago. The Vikings clinched the division with that wild comeback yesterday. The 49ers clinched the division with the win in Seattle the other day. Tampa Bay fighting it out. Carolina has a chance to win the division, believe it or not, if they win out. But they are losing right now to Pittsburgh. And then the Lions, of course, in the mix. They're beating the Jets by three. There's so much that can happen still at the back end of that bracket. Giants, Washington, Detroit, even Green Bay, they're all in it. It's crazy. And that's the way it should be. The last few weeks, as many teams alive, 
the better. ETN cuts up the middle with a big run. ETN's got a first down and runs his way out to the 40. Great job there by Travis ETN. Just setting the blocks up. Find the little crease backside. When he gets in the open field, he is a dynamic run. He's got 14 carries, 85 yards, averaging over six yards a carry today. You know, he had that fumble early, but he's played well. Give it to him again. A little stutter move right up the gut again. And he's got five more. Or Damone Clark brought him down. By the way, the Jaguars, the end of that drive, that last drive, Jawan Taylor, their right tackle, left the game. Walker Little has been in for him. Second-year man, second-round draft pick last year. And Taylor, we're told by Aaron, has a hamstring injury and questionable to return. Lawrence lofting, has Kirk. Oh, he's got it. What a catch. Over the shoulder, Christian Kirk. What an unbelievable catch. They call this an inside fade. We saw it earlier. Christian Kirk caught it against Anthony Barr. This time they have their nickel inside corner. Deron Bland, he's lined up on him, but it doesn't matter. Great job by Marvin Jones running interference. Does not make contact. And you talk about catching the back tip of the ball. I mean, he needed every inch of that ball to pull it down. And right now, Jacksonville's on fire. Yeah, all of a sudden, Kirk Memory had no catches in the first half. He's got three for 63 in this half. 28 yards there. ETN, right side, and another strong hole. ETN takes advantage as he gets down near the 21. And this is beyond impressive to me. You know, this young team trying to find their footing, coming off their best win of the year. They're down and on the precipice of getting blown out, and now they're driving to take the lead. Yeah, and to add to that, against one of the best teams in the entire league. I mean, Dallas is up there, not just in the NFC, but they're a top-five team at minimum in the entire league. So for them to come back and have a chance here to not only have a chance to tie it, but potentially take the lead, as you said, that's really impressive. To Michael Hasty in the game, he gets it at running back, running left. Gets a couple of blocks inside the 10 now. To Michael Hasty got great blocking, got all the way down to the 10. Great job here on the left side. Dan Arnold, the tight end. Chris Manhurts, the other tight end. That down block allows Brandon Sheriff. He gets all the way out on the edge. Hasty does the rest. That's really well blocked. And right now, Jacksonville's rolling. First and goal. ETN gets decked by Wilson and gets down to the five. Jaguars two of three today converting in the red zone and we have an injured cowboy here And that is Wilson who made that tackle Now remember we saw Dorrance Armstrong there outstanding lineman go out earlier Aaron tells us knee injury For him questionable to return Van Der Esch already out of the game with a neck injury so some injuries today for this Dallas D You know, so often in the NFL, the teams that have the best opportunity to run the table and really make a strong push as they approach the playoffs is really the teams that remain the healthiest. And for the most part, Dallas has had some pretty good fortune. I know they lost Terrence Steele last week and had a couple, but we've seen a couple, you know, some of their guys today have to exit. You just got to hope it's short term because you, know, you mentioned Dorrance Armstrong, Leighton Van Der Ash here, Donovan Wilson. These are three of their... Three of their better defensive players, so it's good to see Wilson be able to walk off. Yeah, and with, you know, Wilson, the intrigue there is Dan Quinn loves to run three safeties at the same time, and they're all so versatile, so that changes his plan a little bit. Second down and goal. Oh, Lawrence lined up as a wide receiver here. They go Wildcat, ETN, straight up the gut. Not going to get there. 
Third and goal at Trevor Lawrence lined out wide that time. Well, we mentioned when we talked to Dan Quinn, he said, you know, I'm glad my guys were tested last week, right? We were put right up until the end, took a fourth down stop to give our team a chance to make the comeback. Well, they've got a chance to make a big stop here. Got to imagine Doug Peterson is at least considering this to be four down territory. We know his history of being aggressive. So Dallas, their defense needs to make a stand. One of their stars needs to step up. Lawrence pumps, throws, caught for the touchdown. Zay Jones. Watch this little pick route on the outside. The two defenders for Dallas just don't pass it off. Christian Kirk goes to the flat. You see Zay Jones. He just uncovers. Miscommunication there. In and in. Out, out, out. They don't pass it off. On that play, Cam Robinson, their injured player, their left tackle, concerned for him. But the Jags just took the lead back after this. Uh, it's a tough scene for Cam Robinson, their franchise left tackle. Here he is, number 74. It looked like Micah Parsons just kind of ran into him and went back awkwardly. Uh, Robinson, really good player. We just told you they lost their right tackle on the last drive with Jawan Taylor going out. So now both tackles are out of this game. On that play, the Jags took the lead. Trevor Lawrence is in some kind of zone in the second half. He's got four touchdown passes. Two of them to Zay Jones, and now the extra point. Give the Jaguars three touchdowns in nine minutes. And the kick is up and good. And so the Jags have their first lead today. 31-27, to and you talked about during the break the throw and the poise by Lawrence. Yeah, what makes this throw even more impressive is not only the accuracy, but he's got Micah Parsons bearing down on him, and he's throwing that ball right into where that pressure is coming from. You mentioned Little. He's in there at right tackle. He gets beat quickly, and he makes kind of a blind throw right into Parsons' face. Perfect, right on the money to Zay Jones for a big touchdown. You can see the frustration. Dallas right now needs to, they need to rally here. Someone needs to make a play and kind of, settle down because a game that they had dominated up until not too long ago has completely flipped. It was 27-10. You felt like Dallas was going to pull away. They were getting themselves set up for the big matchup against Philadelphia. And then the Jags came stormy back. And you know what? We're talking about Trevor Lawrence and rightfully so, Greg. Their defense made a stop at the goal line. They got an interception. They forced another stop here. Their young defense has really brought them back in this game. Yeah, and you think back to the end of the first half. There's a little less than two minutes. Jacksonville goes three and out. They punt the ball back with three timeouts. Dallas takes over about a minute 30. And we said, this doubt, this Jacksonville defense needs a stop. Since that moment, they played really well. Game break time. Let's check in with Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kev. Falcons down 21-10. Desmond Ritter making his first career start. Hands it off to Cordero Patterson, who scores from three yards out. Two-point conversion is good. Falcons down by three. Kev? You know, Falcons are still in the division mix as well for the NFC South. So now the Cowboys find themselves trailing for the first time today by four. 10.03 to go. Prescott, quick drop, throws underneath. Lamb's got it. Makes a move. And then the speed from C.D. Lamb. First down and more out across the 45 and up to midfield. Wow. Quick 25 to C.D. Lamb showing you the speed. Just real soft coverage there by Jacksonville. Quick little short pass to C.D. Lamb, and he just does the rest, run after catch. Jacksonville has not had an answer. Zone or man, we've seen him try to double team him. We've seen him try to play man, zone. C.D. Lamb is having himself a day. Pollard. Right up the gut, and that line surging forward. They're running the ball very well today, and they've stayed with it. And combined over 100 yards on the day, rushing for Dallas between Pollard and 
Prescott and Elliott. And they've run it 29 times for 106 yards. See what's on the line. The Cowboys clinch a playoff berth with a win. But more importantly, with the game against Philly next week, they've got to have it to have a chance at the division. Huge stakes in the next nine minutes. Second and five. Prescott a keeper. Gets to the edge. Key in pursuit. And Dak Prescott should have a first down. See where they mark him. No, they say no. Just a little bit short. And Prescott looking back at that one saying, wait, you sure? Yeah, I thought he got it initially as well. He kind of lowers his right shoulder. Let's take a look at where his knee goes down. Yeah, it's actually a good spot. He's about a half a yard short. Set up this third and short. Got to think quarterback sneak. Yep. That'll get the job done. First down. Yeah, you can always tell. I'm, I'm surprised. I know it's hard to stop even if you don't, even if you know it's coming, but. Typically on a quarterback sneak, the quarterback stance is different. They kind of got that one leg back to push off. The tailback lines up at like three yards because he's going to come in and kind of give a little push from behind. You know it's coming, but it is just with this offensive line, it's just it's tough to stop. They will run it to Pollard. Pollard inside the 35. And is going to pick up six yards on that carry. But it's just a casual conversation on the Jag sidelines there. Well, everyone's gotten involved for them. Close to a first down. Going to be a little bit short. Be a third down and short. Well, it's about the fourth time, KB, they've lined up in the exact same formation and run the exact same play. They go wide trips bunch all the way out outside the numbers. And then Pollard, they're just going to go in easy inside running. In. Here's the count. So it's three over three. He's counting the inside defenders. He could either throw it out there to the smoke or, as you've seen him, just turn around and hand it off to Tony Pollard. The sneak again, and Prescott looks to have it again. A couple of identical third and shorts, and the quarterback sneak will keep the drive going. Six and a half to play. And this was the drive this Dallas offense needed. They needed to settle down. They needed to give their defense time on the sideline to regroup, sustain possession, continue to chip away, get first down after first down. And now as they approach the red zone, they've got to turn it on. They've got to get down here. We've seen them settle for some field goals. They got to punch one in. Flip to Elliott. Elliott, shoulder down, down to the 25. Aluakon in on another tackle. Both he and Rayshon Jenkins have been tackling machines today. Aluakon's got 12 tackles. Jenkins, the safety, has the interception and 18 tackles. That's a lot. Wow, that is crazy. You know, oftentimes you don't want your secondary defenders making that many tackles. And you said it, Jenkins, he's been all over the place. Prescott to throw it quickly to the near side. Gallup gets jacked right away, and he's not going to get there. It'll be a third down coming up. First catch of the day for Michael Gallup. Yeah, nice job here. Soft coverage. So anytime you play soft coverage, the secondary, they know they got to come up and they got to tackle. And... Trey Herndon, he comes up and puts a stick on Gallup, able to wrap his leg, and this is critical here. Dallas has to find a way to convert, keep this drive alive. Pollard in motion, third down, blitz coming. Pollard's open, catches, makes a move to get it. Oh, Pollard had to work to get that first down. He got around Andre Sisco to keep the drive going. Well, great, great play. They just set this up. They know it's man. They send Pollard from the right-hand side towards the three receivers, and they know that's a tough open field tackle for the safety, Andre Sisco. Really nice play design there on third short. They get it right back to Pollard. Nothing there. 
Von Hamilton in on that stop. Second down as we head near four minutes remaining. Long drive by the Cowboys. And they've had a few of them. This is going to be the 12th play of this drive coming up. And as this clock continues to tick, if you're Mike McCarthy, you're starting to get really close here to four down territory. You find yourself down four. You start doing the math about how many more possessions am I going to be able to get. And as we approach the two-minute warning, the opportunity to get an extra you know, possession following a field goal goes down. Blitz coming. Prescott unloads, and a low sliding grab is made. Noah Brown, really terrific catch. Uh, bring him another third down. Yeah, nice job here by Noah Brown. Ball's a little low. You see it come out of his hand with kind of that downward trajectory, but a nice job there by Brown getting his hands under it to make this more of a manageable third down. Third down. Prescott spins away. Looking to throw on the run. Does so. It's caught for the touchdown. Noah Brown. His second. Well, we mentioned it at the start of that drive. Dallas needed their best players to come up. And in that drive, Dak Prescott was on it. Arden Key loses contain. He goes inside. Dak buys some time. Two plays in a row. Noah Brown does a great job going down, getting under the ball. Great scramble drill reaction. It's a big-time answer there by a Dallas offense that needed that spark for what's been a tough half. Boy, was it ever. Extra point is up, and it is through. 13 plays, 75 yards, and a seven-minute drive. Noah Brown's got his two touchdowns today. The Jags, secondary frustration there. And Dak Prescott, what a drive. Cowboys in front. So keep your eye here on number 49, Arden Key. He's the defensive end. Their job is to contain this pocket. But for some reason, he decides to run right into Tyler Smith and go inside. That's what allows Dak Prescott to get outside for second reaction. You've got to set an edge on that pocket. That was not a line game. That was not a stunt. It was just a four-man pressure. Keep Dak Prescott in the pocket. Once he breaks contain, you put so much stress on your defensive backs to have to guard the scramble. Second reaction, as you see, Noah Brown comes back to his quarterback. And now you find yourself down three. And the Jags will start on their 25. Well, Christmas Day, a holiday edition of the NFL on Fox. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers take on Tua and the Dolphins. 12.30 Eastern begins the coverage on Fox and the Fox Sports app. So we look in this AFC playoff picture. Bills with a big win over the Dolphins in the snow last night. The Chiefs were having their trouble today with Houston. They're up by three right now. Jets have taken the lead over the Lions. There's so much, so many teams are still in it, including the Jags, who can make the playoffs despite a 5-8 and eight record after the win last week. Trevor Lawrence, four touchdowns, three of them to Zay Jones, down by three, three minutes to play. Lawrence, pressure coming, throws, and a good catch up to the 30. Ingram has it. And an update on the offensive line, Greg, trying to figure out what... These Jags are doing with the injury to Cam Robinson. So Walker Little goes to the left side, and Blake Hans now comes in. Third-year players played a lot of right tackle before on the right side. So two new tackles for this final drive. And actually, Jawan Taylor has just come back in. He hurt his hamstring earlier in the game, so there you go. Now it's Lawrence throwing Kirk first down. You know, every young quarterback, they, they wait for their big moment. KB on the national scene to kind of break out. I think if you're Trevor Lawrence, year two, you got one of the best teams, Dallas Cowboys at home. This feels like this is setting up to be his moment. If he can pull off this drive, this is his welcome to the national spotlight. Pressure. Lawrence backpedal throws near side incomplete. Trayvon Diggs was lingering. Think an interception. And 201 left. And second and ten. No, but you're right, right? I mean, here's Lawrence. He's had a big day, a big second half. 
four touchdowns. We all know him from his days winning a national title at Clemson, but this this is like the NFL moment that's yep. on the table for him right now. Right, against one of the premier teams in the league, one of the biggest brands in the league. You're at home. You battled all the way back from a 17-point deficit, and you've got the ball in your hand with just over two minutes to go. Quick throw, Lawrence has it. Agnew makes the catch, cutting up field. And he's tackled out across the 40 by J-Ron Kerr. So it'll be a third down when we come back. We've hit the two-minute warning. Lawrence looks calm, all smiles, but his team down by three. That sets the stage. 34-31 Cowboys, been a really good game. The Jaguars were down big. They scored three touchdowns and a bunch to come all the way back and take their first lead. The Cowboys put together a long epic drive and then a Noah Brown touchdown and now it's on the shoulders of Trevor Lawrence. Third and five, plenty of time, three timeouts to go. As the last 20 games, the Jags have pulled an offer. Lawrence's opportunity to change that. The first to third and five against this Cowboys D. Blitz coming. Throw is caught. Kirk up to midfield is a first down. Quick decision and an eight-yard gain. Yeah, nice job. It's just a little choice route by Christian Kirk out of the bunch. He can break out, he can break in, or verse zone, he can just sit. It's exactly what he did there for the first down. More pressure. Lawrence spins away. How did he do it? Still on his feet. Inside the foot. Ball is loose and it comes out. And the Cowboys have it. After an unbelievable play, the D takes it away. I mean, just a remarkable effort to just get out of this sack. And then for the young quarterback, just get down. Just get down. You've picked up the first down. There's no need to cut back for that hit. He's under. He's trying to make a play. He's competing so hard. He just... He's got to learn, but it's over. Just get down. Wow. Jay Ron Cor a curse with the shoulder forced it, and Micah Parsons picked it up. Not over. Three timeouts remaining. And you see Lawrence, the emotions after making that unbelievable play. <laughs> Shaking hands. Williams forced the pressure that he got out of, but of course Parsons picks it up. But here it is. Three timeouts for each team. 128 to go. And you just hate that for Trevor Lawrence. He has played incredible. He's made so many plays with his arm and his legs. That being a great example, just sometimes the competitor in you thinks there's more yards to gain. Unfortunately for him, the big hit by Curse gives the ball back to Dallas. And they will run and go nowhere. Backwards, actually. It's another good play by Dewan Smoot. You see Lawrence here, another shot of that last down. 54, Williams, he's going to get great, Sam Williams, he's going to get great pressure, and he just slips. He's got Hasty out in front, but he sees some yardage back inside, but he doesn't see Kirsch. You can see he knows it. He knows it. It's a great learning lesson. You Sometimes know. you got to just put the competitive nature at bay for a couple plays. But, man, he's played his heart out this second half. You almost hope he gets another crack at it, right? We'll see, it's up to the D. They call their first timeouts. There's two timeouts remaining. They've got nobody in the backfield. This is interesting. Pollard lines up as a wideout. And now they're going to motion him back in and flip it to him. Coming near side. Pollard cuts it up the field, and it's going to bring up third down. The Jaguars will call their second timeout. State Farm Post Game Show comes your way next. Well, it goes without saying. This is this is the play of the game. If Dallas if Dallas is able to convert here, third and ten, they can just kneel it out and get their big win heading into that Philadelphia matchup on Christmas Eve. But Jacksonville has them in a little bit of a predicament here. Are they willing to throw the ball? Are they willing to be aggressive to try to throw the ball in the event of an incompletion? They allow Jacksonville to keep that timeout in their pocket. Do they play it safe, hand it off, 
and put this game on the back of their defense and say Jacksonville is not going to score with no timeouts. Let's see what they do. It's going to be a pass. Yeah, there's no one to hand the ball off to. They will throw it. Blitz is coming. Prescott going to go deep for it all. Down the field. It is incomplete. They go deep, and the Jags get a hold, and they'll get it back with 113 left. All right, well, they're still alive. Great coverage. Darius Williams out there. You can see he's playing hard inside leverage. Make them throw a hard, contested ball to the sideline. Nice job there, nice job there by Smoot putting a hit on Dak. And you can see Trevor saying, all right, thanks, buddies. <laughs> Appreciate you guys, man. Giving me one more shot. Time out in my pocket. Let's see if I can go be a hero. Oh, so the Jags D gets a big stand. Now it's anger to punt it away. Agnew makes a man miss. And another couple men miss and up to the 30 with 101 to go and one timeout in their pocket. This game has had a lot to it, right? I mean, really, both offenses functioning well. Prescott threading the needle. Peyton Hendershot and then Noah Brown's got a two touchdown day. Four touchdown passers for Trevor Lawrence. Three of them to Zay Jones right there, number seven. But then the Cowboys answer. Big drive. Noah Brown, there he is. Gave them the lead. They just got the turnover. But three and out. Give it back to the Jags with one timeout left. Down by three. Minute one to go. 35 yards from a field goal try. Lawrence stands in and fires. And it's dropped. Incomplete. Marvin Jones had that one yeah Trevor Lawrence he stepped up in the pocket and threw an absolute dart and he threw that ball right into the 11s there's just reach your hands out big pet peeve of mine I hate when guys catch the ball off their chest that's a great ball trust your hands reach out you pick up 20 on first down just yeah Jacks catch. have the most drops in the league stunt coming it's picked up. Lawrence going deep and a little miscommunication there. Jones broke out. Ball was in third and ten. And you see one on one here in the slot. Zay Jones tried to get him on a little corner post. A little contact there. Just trying to sell that post and then slap out the corner. And third and ten. This Dallas defense, we've talked all day about their ability to rush the passer. Dan Quinn's going to have either some sort of pressure, some sort of line game to try to free up. See, he's got Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons both on the same side. Lawrence fires. Kirk goes down and get it. Waiting for a signal, and he's got it for a first down. And the clock is running down to 37 seconds. Like to welcome those of us who just they're going to look at this, but it sure looks like he caught it. Like to welcome the new audience that just joined us here in Jacksonville. Cowboys lead it by three, 35 seconds ago, and that on a third and ten is a huge play to Kirk. As they review it here up in the booth. Prescott has a big day, 256 yards, three touchdowns. Lawrence has had a great day, too, but fumbled on the last possession. But the D held and given him this last chance. Jags were down big. Then Lawrence got hot. Yeah, so important to note here, assuming that this, by all these pictures, it looks like clearly a catch. Nice job getting his arms underneath this low ball. Right now, Trevor Lawrence has to have his guys in the huddle, KB. This is an important process. Even though the clock is stopped, once the official rules you know, that this ball is completed, once this ball is marked ready to play, if they don't take a timeout, Jacksonville, they will wind the clock prior to the snap. So they've got to get their play, get up on the ball, and be ready. When he whistles it in, they've got to snap it. Let's go to Mike Pereira on this as they continue to look. Mike, your thoughts here? Yeah, I, I see the ball coming into his arms there. He's got that right hand underneath the ball, so I don't see it going to the ground. It looks to me like, again, remember, and they ruled on the field as a catch. I would think it would stay as a catch. Yeah, and just taking a long time with this one. 
Well, Mike, you're the authority. We agree. You see there, I guess that's maybe the angle they're looking at, but it looks to all of us like that is a catch. A, a long discussion. And again, to Greg's point. At the review, the ruling on the field stands a completed pass. First down. So now, 35 seconds as they get set to wind the clock. So they got to get out of the huddle now. Get up on the ball and understand that once the officials all get set, once that whistle blows, snap it. Every second matters. They need 16 yards for a real field goal chance for Riley Patterson. Taking too much time. It's winding down to 25. Lawrence gets it. Pressure. Throws it. Hasty. He's got to get out of bounds, and he will. But 17 seconds remain. To your point, they I, took too much time. Yeah, they got up with 32 seconds. They, they let seven seconds run off the clock. If you're the coaches, you've got to be in his ear. That whistle blows. Set hut. Every, that, that's seven seconds, six, seven seconds that should be on the clock here. You got to understand those game situations and help your young quarterback manage them. Yeah, Riley Patterson's career long is 52. Got to get to the 34. But you know you're going to take a shot, but they need more. 17 seconds, one timeout. Pressure coming. Lawrence gets rid of it. It's caught. Trying to get out of bounds. Does he get there? No! Ingram could not get there. They're going to have to use a timeout. They've got no choice. And they do with eight seconds left. What a job by Curse to keep Ingram in bounds. All right, it's time out. Jacksonville. Game clock out. We're ready to please reset the game clock to 11 seconds. 11 seconds. Yeah, you mentioned it. Curse is fighting hard to keep him in back, keep him in bounds. Let's see if he gets out of bounds. He oh, does. He's out. He's out of bounds. They should not have had to use that last time out. That's a great effort. No body parts down. His right elbow is out in the white. The ruling on the field of a completed pass is under further review. Yeah, so they're looking at this, and, you know, why don't we just ask Mike again? Mike, do you, are we on the right path? It didn't look like – it looked like he's out of bounds to us. Do you think they'll change this? Yeah, you're, you're looking at this going down the right path, and the big thing in here is, you know, they can give them their time out back. That's right. That's the key issue because he is not down um, – he is not down in bounds. So that's what they'll look at and talk about. Hey, Mike, let, let me follow up on that. Now, my understanding of the rule, though, is if you're being contacted out of bounds, you must be going forward. Is that an element to this play? Could they rule that Evan Ingram was going sideways or potentially backwards as he went out of bounds? Can't make that ruling. You can't try to put progress into okay. it at this point. No progress was ruled, so it's just the element of Great. inbounds or out of bounds. To Mike's point, and they're, you know, they're trying to tie this game up, they can go anywhere on the field because they got a timeout now. So they, they have a chance to do whatever play they want as opposed to can't stop the clock. It's huge. Absolutely. If so this they is, change it. So this right here with 11 seconds is mandatory get down. You take another look here. Get a good view here of when his right elbow goes down. What's on the play clock? Game clock. It's about well, right. And they have 11 seconds. up there now, but maybe one more second. Yeah, so to, to finish my thought, though, KB, right now in the huddle, you've got to be telling all of your receivers it's mandatory get down. Once you catch the ball, assumingly in bounds. After review, the receiver was down out of bounds. Therefore, Jacksonville will receive their timeout back. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 12 seconds. 12 seconds on the game clock, please. Thank you. So right now, the, the key, KB, is obviously you need to get a first down. But then once you get your forward progress, it's mandatory get down. Yards after catch, running in open space, all that does is blow clock. You've got to get down, slide, give yourself up, and take a quick timeout and reset. Riley Patterson. Longest career is 52. He's hitting from 50 in pregame warm-ups. So you'd like to get to the 34, but Greg said it's third down. And now we get whistles and timeout on First the field. Time Dallas. Dallas. As they will talk things over. Think about this. The Cowboys 
chasing the Eagles in the division. They're two games back of Philadelphia, who win against Chicago. They host them next week, but they've got to win this game. And if they do win this game, they know they're at least in the playoffs. There's so much on these last 12 seconds. Yeah, and, and right in these situations, pass rush ends games. Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence, one of your premier defensive pass rushers, a sack ends this game. A pressure, all by all means, almost ends this game. One of these pass rushers needs to find a matchup, come up with a stunt, a game, and they've got to get to Trevor Lawrence here. And a sack ends it. Meanwhile, here we go. Third down and three. Cowboys come with pressure. Lawrence in trouble. Throw. He's got a completion. Jones dives down to the 31, and they can stop it with five seconds left. They're in field goal range. An 18-yard completion on third down, and five seconds left, a chance to tie. Well, Zay Jones, he knew the end of game rules. Come back, scramble drill, catch the ball. Wow, that ball went right between Donovan Wilson's hands. No. Oh, my God, it went right between his arms. That is unbelievable. And then really smart, just gives himself up. Plenty of time to call the timeout and set up a potential. I mean, what an end-of-game scenario. I mean, oh, my God, game management, clock management, timeout usage. And so this is awesome. 48 yards for the tie for Riley Patterson. And Dallas going to ice the kicker. That is not going to count. Time out. Dallas, 30 seconds. And so Patterson will have another opportunity to think about it. Just think about this. Lawrence had that unbelievable play, spun out of a sack, had a big run, fumbles. Dallas gets it back, has a chance to end the game. You feel like the game's over, but the defense for Jacksonville holds. And now Lawrence takes him down the field again with all the craziness that happened. Still got to make this field goal to force overtime. That's what's going on in Chicago. The Eagles up by five. Could see bonus coverage next, or we could be heading to overtime. We'll see. It's on the shoulders of Riley Patterson now. Kick is up, and it is good! Let's go to overtime. The one they called timeout on, he was a, almost a little short. He, quite, he didn't quite get it there. The second attempt, he banged that ball right down the middle. He hit that ball halfway up the net. See Doug Peterson, Trevor Lawrence, little chance at redemption now. What a game. Back and forth, both teams responding. Stack saying, don't worry, I'm going to get a chance here at overtime here. Give me the ball. Little unsung hero. I know it went to review and they got the call right. Evan Ingram to fight his way to get out of bounds so they could save the timeout and stop the clock there. That was an amazing play. Every team works on end-of-game scenarios. It's an emphasis the we'll entire season. The overtime period. Each team will have an opportunity to possess the ball. We'll play a 10-minute overtime period. Each team will have an opportunity to possess the ball unless the first team that possesses the ball scores, touchdown, or there's a defensive score. If the score is tied at the end of the overtime period, the game will end in a tie. Each team will have two timeouts. We'll have fourth quarter timing rules and all replays will come from upstairs. Any questions? Dallas being the visiting team, you will make the call. Heads, tails, what's your call? Tails. Tails is the call. Heads. You want to go that way. the ball, which way you want to kick. Jacksonville will receive the ball on this end of the field. Good luck, gentlemen. And so the Jags will get it to start overtime. This is maybe the play the forced overtime. Evan Ingram, unbelievable effort to get out of bounds, save the timeout. They convert. Lawrence, big time drive. Let's go to extras.
Dallas got the turnover. You thought they could seal it, but the Jags forcing the three and out, and then Lawrence, who was really brilliant in the second half, leads his team down, game tying field goal at the buzzer, and here we are. The Jags won the toss. They get the ball. A touchdown wins it. If not, the Cowboys will get an opportunity. And they will start on the 25. And so a lot of pressure on Dallas's defense here. You know, they've gotten shredded a little bit in this second half. And obviously, playoff berth on the line for them. You see Lawrence, he's been terrific. They have. And a lot of the reason they've struggled a little bit on defense, meaning Dallas, is because of the play. I mean, you look at that second half, three touchdowns. Of course, he had the two turnovers, the pick, and the late fumble. But for Trevor Lawrence to put the pick behind him and respond, then to put the fumble with under two minutes, minute 30, a fumble. Then you get the ball back and you lead a game-tying drive. It says a lot about this young kid. He's going to get first crack here in overtime. The run at first to ETN. Not much there. He's got a 100-yard day, though. 103 yards today for ETN. Lawrence over 300 yards. Jay Jones with three touchdowns receiving. Four man rush. Lawrence loads up far side. Nobody home. Miscommunication that time. I think Marvin Jones was the intended receiver. And they'll regroup on third and nine. Yeah, you're exactly right. You see Marvin Jones off to the right. They have what they call route adjustments. And when there's a single high safety or two high safeties, the route is different. In that case, it was too high. So Trevor Lawrence is expecting him to continue to run up the sideline for a little bit of a go ball shot. He sits it down thinking it was one high safety. And that's why the ball is so off the mark. Third and nine. Jags are eight of 11 on third down today, and that's going to make it harder. Offense number 75, five-yard penalty, third down. That's on Jawan Taylor's playing hurt. He left the game with a hamstring injury, but when Cam Robinson, the other tackle, went out, he came back in. And you see him right here. He just kind of flinches, starts his set, and oftentimes these pass rushers can get into your brain as a pass protector, and you're trying to anticipate that count. Just move a little early. Find your pass rushers. Micah Parsons, bottom of the screen. One of the best in the league. Third and long. Pressure coming. Lawrence going to set up a screen. ETN, long way to go. Gets the block. Not going to get there. He got relatively close, but he needed to get to the 35 as Anthony Barr was there on the stop. And we got an injured Cowboy and a couple of injured Cowboys on the play. And Sean Wright. You see, he's a potentially a little unsteady there. I think Barr and Wright ran into each other on that tackle. Oh, yeah, he comes in and kind of he hits ETN first, and then he gets a little friendly fire from Donovan Wilson and Barr. The three of them all kind of ran into each other, so... Hopefully Nelson's okay. He kind of took it from all angles. It's a smart call by Doug Peterson. Third and 14, you pick up 11 in his mind. That's like adding 11 yards to this punt. You don't want to punt from inside your own 20-yard line. Maybe now you can flip the position here and have a little better shot of keeping him out of field goal range to end the game. Yeah, Logan Cook will punt it away. Dallas defense gets their hold. I'd like to welcome those of you who just joined us here in Jacksonville. Terrific game. Back and forth. Jags coming down the field. Last second drive. Field goal to send it in overtime where it's 34 all along with Mike Pereira, Aaron Andrews, Greg Olson. I'm Kevin Burkhart. Richie Zions, our producer. Rich Russo, our director. So now that the Jags have had the ball, any score wins it. Dallas, if they win, they're in the playoffs. That's what's on the line. Yeah, and over the years, we saw it last week even, more recently, this is where Dak Prescott shines. Ball in his hands, must-win scenario. I'd let him take me down and end it.
Little flip to Pollard. Got some space out there. Gets a block. Breaks a tackle. First down and more. Pollard up to the 40. Speed and blocking and a rare missed tackle by Aluakon helped that he's got 20. Yeah, again, another speed option. We saw him run it earlier. This time it's executed much better. I think Aluakon just misjudged the speed of Tony Pollard. Kind of takes a flat angle and Pollard just outruns him for some extra yards after contact. Here's that three-man bunch set. We've seen him do it all day. Inside handoff. Yep, give it to Pollard right up the gut. Strong run again out to the 47. And just remember, Dallas's kicker, Brett Maher, has a monster leg. Realistically, if they get to the 40, so I'm talking 13 more yards, they'll have a field goal opportunity. Yeah, so Jacksonville, they need to know that. Right? They need to understand. They need to create some sort of negative play, whether that's a sack, a tackle for loss, force a penalty. They only got about 15 yards to play with here before field goal is realistic. So, again, they're building the same formation time and time again. They're just playing a numbers count inside. And they'll run it, and nothing doing. Pollard goes nowhere as Rayshon Jenkins has yet another tackle. He's amassed a million of them today. Brings up third down. Well, we saw Dallas's defense show up. Their first possession on the field can jacksonville answer in a game that's kind of gone back and forth both sides of the ball with both teams taking turns playing well can jacksonville's defense come up with the play third and four blitz coming prescott throws backwards and intercepted jenkins has another one racing down the sidelines Rayshon jenkins is going to win it It is absolute madness here in Jacksonville. Wow. The ball gets deflected, clearly caught by Rayshon Jenkins, who has had potentially the best game of his entire career. Two interceptions, 18 tackles, a walk-off touchdown. You see the ball deflect right off Noah Brown. Picks it up clean out of the air. Well, we just said, did Jacksonville have one more play in them on defense? And boy, did they ever. So the Cowboys do not clinch a playoff spot, but the Jaguars are well in the playoff mix. A signature win in Doug Peterson's first season. A comeback led by Trevor Lawrence. And the defense, a 52-yard interception touchdown from Rayshon Jenkins. Wow. What a game. In overtime, the Jaguars 40, the Cowboys 34. Back to Jacksonville after this.